Yo, let me know when you start that countdown, baby. Oh, wait. Uh, look uh, good? Yeah, let me, let, let me start the countdown now. Three, right. two, right. one. You're on. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome up, to another ambush live stream, my friends. <laughs> What's up, everyone? <laughs> everyone good? Everyone good? All right. So before we jump in too far, let's check audio. Checking, checking. Brian my has... Check. Uh, Brian's traveling. He wanted to come down to visit me, so here he is. Although we are not next to each other, we are currently around what fifty miles apart, maybe sixty miles apart. So shortly yeah. we're going to have dinner. <laughs> of course, I'm, just, I'm just down here. For, I'm just down here for dinner, everybody. Just down here for dinner. <laughs> and how's everyone doing? Okay, what I wanted to start off with, everybody, is update on S ninety D OLED panel. Mix up. Okay. I'm going to give myself my own topic because I think it's important to talk about that. But before we Absolutely. jump into that, I, I got it directly from the horse's mouth. Samsung reached out to me right before the live stream. They called me and says, hey, okay, FOMO, we know what's what. You can share this. And so <laughs> it's funny. I can't wait to share it with everyone. But before we jump into that cliffhanger, let's say hello to everyone. Oh, look, we have a nice crowd today, right? Hello all, Michael Wyckoff, Shane, I am Blues and Blues am I, Scrub Nation, Livius, Cosmo, Lisa, Rossi, and Quack Fu is here, Cujo, hey Money Cujo, Brad the Guitar Man, and James, and if I miss you, don't forget to say hello, Firas is here, Philip, all right, Andrew, I don't think I missed anyone, AJ, Nigel, hello Nigel, Eric Baker, Philip, okay, hopefully I didn't miss anyone, all right. Let's talk about the, ah, if you guys have missed it, the S90D this year, there was word out from everywhere saying that Samsung is going to mix and match QD OLED with W OLED in the S90D lineup, right? Because normally 55, 65, and 77 last year were all QD OLED on the S90C. This year, Samsung bought a whole bunch of W OLEDs and are mixing it up in the S90D. So that's the word out on the street. I reached out to, so, <laughs> I reached out to, I was gonna say Hisense. Yeah, Hisense would give me the right information. I reached out to Samsung. <laughs> like, don't buy anything. <laughs> I reached out to Samsung and they said, wait a minute, let, let, let us find out what the answer is. Because obviously, how they treat each region is also very different. They wanted to make sure they got the right answer for North America or USA specifically in my case. And so we have an update. And I wonder what you guys are thinking. You know, is it going to be real? Is this, I'm going to ask you first, Brian. Do you think the panel lottery for the S90D is going to be a real thing? Or do you think it's only going to be a real thing for the unfortunates in the other parts of the world? I think it's going to be a real thing for the unfortunates in the real part of the world. I'm guessing, because I know we haven't talked about this uh, off camera. I'm guessing it's going to be the exact same thing we had last year, where one size specifically will be a WRGB OLED. Because I had people go tooth and nail last year and say, no, 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 there is an 83. And I'm telling you, there is not from last year. So I think you're going to have very right. much the same. I cannot see the company doing that phone. I can't see them. Um, I know we did see the the smaller version at CES, which I think mm -hmm. might be their step down. But I cannot see them doing that. It would be terrible okay. for them to do that. And it'll be a question that we're going to answer all year long. So I think it's going to be much about nothing. At least in the so... US. What I got, what I can share today, because they're still locking down all the information, but what I can share today is this. This week, we're going to get a launch of a bunch of Samsung TVs, including their OLED TVs. Every OLED TV mentioned at launch this week will be QD OLED. They are not launching any W OLED models or sizes. So that's the lead up, right? If there is an S90D, Whatever size that's being announced by the end of this week, it is definitely going to be QD OLED. And, you know, <laughs> I will get exact model sizes that will be launching by no later than Thursday, I hope. So we can be even more specific. But at least letting you guys know, this week's launch of Samsung OLED TVs will be QD OLED. Whatever models come out, whatever sizes, those are all QD OLED. Hopefully that might clear something. <laughs> now, the, the sad part is, what if there is no S90D announced? Then, 
Well, that kind of speaks for itself. But whatever S90D is announced this week, those are QD OLED at launch. All right. Did, did that help clear things up, Brian? No. <laughs> as long as Not you buy all. this week, as long as you buy this week, you're good. Don't buy next week, though. <laughs> don't, don't buy the end of the year, right? Someone's that, that, gonna, that gonna say, wait a minute, this stream is a month old. Oh, man. <laughs> wait, I need to timestamp this stream right now, or date stamp. It is March 18. So the week of March, right? The launch of March, all OLED TVs launching in March. Right now, if you buy it, it will be QD OLED launching this week. So we'll, we'll see what that means. But okay, now, that. and to, to be fair to my Samsung rep, uh, they didn't have the exact information either. That's what they were given. And that's what they yeah. were told to share. As they get more information, I will get more information and then we'll get more details. But at least it's something, right guys? So... <laughs> Now, let's get on to today's topic. LG G4 is Beast. on fire. Absolute and Beast. Okay, it's on fire on paper, for sure. You saw it in person. They showed you comparisons with last year's TV, the competition, and so forth, right? Now, yeah. oh, wait, wait. Uh, yes, John, there is an embargo, and that's... But the embargo applies to prices, and model sizes. So, and I don't even have the information yet. So, as soon as I get it, I can share it after the embargo, but they're holding on to it to the very last minute. So, what will be lifted this week is the launch prices, release date, and the models that attach to those prices, and they will be QD OLED. So, that will be revealed no later than the end of the week or by Thursday. And right, now, so and right now, it's just it's just between us, just me, you, and 280 people. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have shared that either. But okay, hey, welcome to the club. You guys are in the know. <laughs> so the G4. Now, you've seen it in person. So I wanted to share with everyone on paper the excitement, right? So at CES, they introduced a few things on paper. The AI director, they showed us, but they really didn't show us, right? Like they didn't just the menu. Yeah. Whereas your visit to LG, you got to play with real content, put whatever on, streaming, mm -hmm. whatever. You really got to see it. Yeah at play against the competition. And if you guys saw Classy's video, he kind of dug a little bit deeper and definitely you see the improvements. And exactly what is it? The AI, the, the AI director slash image processing appears to have not just caught up to Sony, but may have exceeded Sony in a few different ways, right? So that's one. Now that's what we were waiting for. XR clear competitor. It's here, the G4 has it. Unfortunately, the C4 does not have the same level of processing power. How good will be will the C4 be compared to the G4? Well, maybe it may end up being very close. We just have to have those side by side. But as far yeah. as labeling, C4 is not getting the labels. It's not getting these, these features like AI director, right? Now, the second thing that really excites me is for those who are motion sensitive, right? You saw my video and you saw Classy's and you saw Brian's. Motion settings have improved, but this is the first time they're doing dynamic adjustment of motion setting in the same scene where you don't touch anything. The TV will recognize that this scene has stutter. They will increase soap opera effect, uh, the interpolation so that it's smooth just for that part. And then once that stutter issue is gone, meaning that the scene changes to a slower moving scene where there is no stutter normally, it goes back to the cinema motion that you're, you're normally used to, right? And I think that's brilliant because this will only get better over time. And a lot of people are saying, wait, is that true cut that we've been waiting for? And I honestly don't know if it's the same as true cut technology. I do know that true cut has metadata on the source that tells you when something has certain motion information that your TV will adjust to. In this case, the LG doesn't need that metadata. It just recognizes it. And I think that's what AI, uh, neural, neural networks do. They recognize motion. So we saw how Samsung recognizes images of, let's say, 720p, and when they upscale it to 8K or 4K, they fill in the blanks to make the image clearer. This is filling the blank for motion. And I think that's just so brilliant and so innovative. And I would have thought Sony would have done this first, but no, LG is first. This doesn't mean that Sony doesn't have something up its sleeve. So as soon as we have more information from Sony, we'll definitely share to see. But could this be the year, Brian, that LG surpasses Sony processing at all 
levels from accuracy to mo I mean we already know Adobe Vision is better to motion processing to image processing could this be the year for LG Brian you saw it well I mean it's it's more than just seeing it having Greg Lee on the channel um, you guys may have seen my interview with Greg Lee much like my interview with Rob Brennan having somebody like that come on the channel and give us some of the particulars I wasn't aware that part of LG's signature is its accuracy how accurate and true the director's intent they are from a, a calibration standpoint, the tools they have, the, the partnership they have with Portrait, these are things that aren't common knowledge. So Sony gets that, um, but then XR Clear not being something you can disable, there are a lot of these AI picture features on LGs you can disable for those of you that are purists. But yes, seeing, you can disable it, yes. You can disable them. Now, there's a difference between seeing Classy's comparison, Spears and Munsell, which I love them. But to me, that's much about making them all look the same. So seeing them show all the TVs in the same presets with real content was very interesting FOMO. The TV was brighter, had mm -hmm. better shadow detail, but in the lamps, in small parts of the room that were shrouded in darkness, there was more color on the MLA G4. And that's what they point out. It's their demo, but it's not their demo material. It's uh, Batman v Superman and a lot of the usual suspects. But where Spears and Munsell and putting things in their most accurate preset, to me, makes the TVs look exactly the same. My goal is to make them look to their own strengths. More and that's where, the G4, yeah, that's where the G4 really shines. And mm -hmm. as you've mentioned, the dynamic tone mapping, the, preference, the pro professional aspect of that, you can control the curve. And even though the C4, for those of you guys that want the C4 and even the um, Nano QD Nano Mini LED, the UI has been updated. So those are the same processors, FOMO, but they, the engineers have told me they've tweaked them and improved them. They have all the features that the G4 has. They have that professional part in their, their uh, menu. So yeah. it's not like, the A95L, where it has all this new um, screen and operating system, and then the A80L has the older one. They all have that updated. So I do think the C4 will be a jump over the C3. It will be worth picking up. We'll be covering that and even the B4 this year. Um, but I think the G4, the conversation was so much about the brightness at CES, we buried the lead. Because yeah. the processing is what they should have spoken about more. They did talk about Alpha 11. But FOMO, I think it's the next level. But even the ability to focus on the middle of the screen, kind of like the 900D, where the, the foreground, the background, you can make the focus. And come on, you can make movies that are very high-end, like Avatar, look as fake as you want, and then disable it and watch The Godfather. So you do get the best of both worlds. Um, and that's what really struck me was the processing. What makes it a, key, a, a clear jump from last year is that, and I'm glad that they're focusing on that because Sony's been leading that way for a long time. Now, speaking of that jump, many people here actually have older LGs. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a crime to say the G2 is an older LG because it's only two years old, right? And yet, Wilson wants to know, can I get the G2, can, can his G2 get any of these processing updates without the hardware switch? And the answer is no, the G4's Alpha 11 is just two generations better, but we're talking a big jump in processing power. This is why the C4 cannot even do a lot of this stuff. It has a weaker processor. So for those of you with the G2, and you're enjoying your TV, don't think much about it. But if you want these additional uh, AI director, uh, tone mapping, custom tone mapping with motion setting, uh, cinematic movement setting, all of that, you're gonna have to update to the G4. But yeah. what's, I think, more impressive, Classy's video still shows the A95L competing big time. And this is what you and I talked about, Brian. When you're in yeah. the Olympics, right? When you're in the Olympics, you win by 0 0.01 seconds. And I do want to speak on this because Classy is brilliant. And Classy really does amazing work. And he uncovers everything, a lot of the stuff that, you know, he's just great with that. My goal is to not make them look the same. My goal is to let them be strong. Spears and Munsell, as good as it is, making them look exactly the same. You Yeah, that's why the shootout is valuable, but also the shootout will have, like at the M-Wave, for instance, 
letting the TVs be themselves is so important. And they, you'll see what you like. Making them look the same, that's, I mean, Classy had Spears and Munsell and he had them walk, you know, the way he wanted them. That's great. To me, we're just approaching it differently. I can see the G4 strengths over the G3 and the A95L. What's ironic is the A95L is in the exact same position the A95K was in. Late mm -hmm. to the party, best TV in the world for a few months, and then the G3 came in and kind of knocked it down a little bit. The Samsung counteracted the G3, and then the A95L came in. So this is our storyline. The G4 doesn't really have a competitor this year. The S95D is going to be a completely different animal with that matte finish, which I'm telling you, I'm a little more sold on because mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that when we're able to. But it has a clear path as far as being the best OLED in the market with processing, uh, firepower, and more sizes from them. And I'd love to address what Ephron is saying. Does it matter what type of content? Absolutely, Ephron. Because, for example, if you're looking, if you need sports to be bright, the G3 was the best. And it continues to be one of the best for bright sports watching and SDR. And the Sony has its weaknesses. For example, if you try to tone map bright content, it will clip aggressively, whereas the G3 does a better job tone, tone mapping brighter content. And now the G4 is even better than that. And so if you're looking at bright HDR scenes, uh, Mad Max, everyone uses that, but even new content that's coming out in HDR, the Sony will bring that brightness down or clip it, whereas the G4 is letting it run a little bit harder and brighter while preserving some color. Now, not the Luminous still isn't as good as QD OLED, but definitely it's not clipping the details like the Sony would. And the Sony does, right? The Sony believes that most content is under 1,000 nits, so it goes up to 1,000, looks great. At around 2,000, you see a clip of details, but that doesn't affect most of you. You guys are not watching it that bright. But now Sony's announcing 4,000 nit content, and suddenly the A95L... It's tone mapping, it's falling a little bit behind. Do you need to get a 4,000 nit TV to get there? The answer is no, the G4 is now doing a better job tone mapping super bright content within its capability. And now we're gonna do it side by side. We're gonna have real content, right, side by side. Yeah. And, that's, and that's pretty awesome. So the answer is yes, uh, Ephraim, when you are choosing a TV, what is your use case? If it's just watching Friends or Columbo, get the A95K, it looks exactly the yeah. same. But if you're pushing yeah. the limits, the G4 is taking the lead here. I love it. Well, we said this the other day off camera. The analogy of the Olympic athlete is perfect for this conversation, is that the best swimmer in the world, the best sprint in the world might be a, a millisecond faster than the one behind them, but they're still the best in the world. That's yes. what we see with TVs. So if you're somebody that, look, I have a C1. I didn't replace it yet. Why? It's good enough. It's great. Right. So the, for many of you, we have people already ask us, hey, you know, I have a G3. Should I buy a G4? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not because the G4 is not better, just because it's not worth it unless you're wealthy to make that jump. Your TV is good enough. However, FOMO, if you're about to buy a TV, the offerings from the G4 just in its setup and its options are better. It's more mm -hmm. customizable. There's more to it. So my thing is, I think you'll regret it. And we said this off camera, FOMO. I think if you buy the G3 and then throughout the year, you're going to miss some of the things that the G4 offers, that professional ability to uh, tone map. Well, uh, Classy was also showing how HDIG can also use that same feature. That's so it's awesome. not just for movie settings. Yeah. So he was showing where, where I always think HDIG being off looks the same as it not being supported. He was showing me how you can actually go into the professional setting and create those curves yourself to make it work. That's something that no one's going to talk about, but I think that's something you might feel you're missing. So for me, FOMO, the only reason I chose the G3 right now is if it's a money thing and mm -hmm. you want the best value. So same position the A95K was in last year. A95L is still one of the best TVs in the world. But guys, it's such a finite window where your TV is the best in the world. It's only, it's less than a year that yeah. you get to have. Now look, the G4 might only have a month <laughs> before something knocks it out. But that's the fun of this. And the excitement of it is, I'm telling you guys, when I'm there, those demos that I play from Jennifer, yes, I can't show you copywritten material, but they do look different on every TV. They do, I promise you. They don't look great yeah. on everything. They look yep. very different. And on the G4, it's the crispiness and the detail 
and the specular highlights that I haven't seen on everything else. And it really was impressive. And I was amped to the point where I'm so close to pre-ordering it to replace my C1. And I would never buy a TV in the beginning of the year. Oh, I'll tell you right now, both Classy and I have pre-ordered our G4. And with limited room as reviewers, uh, for this TV to so quickly become our keeper TV of the year says a lot. Now, you guys know I always have a G series somewhere, but this one's going to be very exciting. And Nigel has a great question. Will these Hi, improvements? Nigel. Hey, Nigel. Will these improvements sell more TVs though? I presume the C series will still sell more. So, Nigel, I would like to compare this to the metaphor of moving the deck chairs on the Titanic. It won't sell more OLED TVs. It, it will not grow the OLED market because the G4 is so expensive. What it will do is G4 will take more of that pie within the OLED pie. So if you have the OLED pie and you have flagship OLED TVs, right? The G4, the S95C, S95D, and the Sony A95L. The G4 this year will take more of that premium flagship pie but the pie i don't believe is going to grow that much more this year i mean it might grow a little bit it might stay the same i hope it doesn't shrink but the oled tv pie last year was above four million right four, four million oled tvs uh, were shipped last year they're hoping to ship over six million this year they'd be lucky to get four and a half to five million this year i think that well, not so. I don't think you'll sell more than five million this year. However, the G4 will take more of the flagship TVs this year. As reviewers get these TVs side by side, it kind of puts the onus on Sony to one fix a few of the issues that reviewers are seeing. Now that we had the Sony for so many months, right? There are things that you know, no TV is perfect. The G4, we will find out all of its warts at some point as well. But it looks like the G4 out of the box is quite amazing and quite an update from the G3. So those of you who haven't bought any OLED TV yet, you have the budget for a G3, a G4, or the A95L. Hold on, you can wait a little bit longer because you really need to see how these compare. And if the G4 ends up only being what, one or $200 more, you gotta go for the G4. Well, and I mean, FOMO too, going back to the C4, that is their bread and butter. So, in totality, how it does in the market as far as pushing OLEDs back to the forefront, that's something that I don't think any of these companies can do alone. But for them, the C4, because that was my concern when I talked to Greg, was we both love the C-Series. I hate to see it left behind. Um, they had to give some space because when it comes to, I already seen comments from like H, he doesn't like the silver bezel. A lot of people left the G3 alone and the G2 FOMO because of the bezel, lack of stand. And they were a little too close, even though I don't think the G2 and the C2 were very close. Um, mm -hmm. People thought, hey, I mean, people literally were, people are asking me about a backlit remote as why they're buying. So it's what people, <laughs> it's true, but it's what people. Right, do, it's, it's the little thing, it's right, quality of life, I can't, yes. So, so for like age, I can't disagree. I don't like the silver bezel versus a black bezel, but I will tell you spending time with the G3 and the G4, that bezel disappears for me. Yeah. And my video, it disappears, but I'm basing it on picture quality. The C4, I'm excited to see now because I'll be able to use that professional uh, dynamic tone mapping setting. That that motion setting will be there too. It will have all the same settings for the most part. Same with the, the, um, the QNET, it still has those too. So they will all be a step up. And um, I think if QD OLED didn't exist, especially at such a low price FOMO from the S90, Mm -hmm. I think we'd be having a completely different conversation. The problem from LG is not only does Samsung exist, we have the onset of these massive mini LEDs that are right around the corner. But I would say wait for the QNED or the QNED because the 90 was really impressive. That video should be up tomorrow or the next day. That precision dimming is no joke. So are you telling me that I should bring in the QNED, QNED 90 for review? Because I I, I've been... All right, all right. Brian I said would, it. I, would, I, I, will, I, would, I will bring the QNED. All right. I, would. I mean, that, now here's the thing I will say, though. And this is, this is, I want to put you in the same room with me, Classy, and everybody from LG. Mm -hmm. So Classy um, had Mad Max Fury Road playing, and he was really trying to hit 4,000 net content to really see it. And me and the group, the engineers, are looking at the Q, QNED and how good the local dimming is. 
And everybody there was like, wow, the local dimming's no joke. And then I just tapped them on the shoulder and looked over the G4, and you're like, oh, wow. That micro contrast mixed with high peak brightness is just untouchable. Micro LED can't touch it. Yes. So it's kind of a shame because OLED you mean is mini so LED. far ahead. Mini LED can't touch it. Micro LED can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I it's mean, the it's just the software on this. Yes, just, it, what it's saying. just it's just that sparkle and that brightness. They weren't limited by size um, and price because obviously I, the ninety the ninety seven G four is going to be a monster. Even yes. though it's not going to have MLA, it's going to be a lot brighter. It's just that price tag everyone is pretty much allergic to. And what I wanted to mention is, so let's let's revisit what SD is saying. All these TVs have issues, not just Sony. So no TV is perfect. Sony has QD OLED. And statistically speaking, you're going to have better uniformity with QD OLED, right? Whereas the G4, the G3, maybe even the G5, they're always, it appears they will still have some of that magenta tint that people complain about. Now, it may not be a big deal. Right, you might not see it in real content, yeah. but if you're sensitive to it and you play games or you have certain content where you see it very clearly on the G3, you most likely will see it on the G4, and you still might have to go with a QD OLED. So definitely, you have to match these TVs and their latest and greatest features to your use case. So it's just a reminder that oftentimes we chase all these great features, and it turns out you know you didn't need all of them because. You don't care, right? So that's a good yeah. point, SD. Definitely. And that's what I like about what these companies do the same, FOMO, and what they do different. They're all gambling about what's going to be big. Like, look at um, Samsung with the S95D. I came after them for the matte finish, and I still would say I don't love it. However, am I buying the TVs? I think their sales would be through the roof the way the frame is. So they're all heading to the same place totally different, which I love. I love how Samsung 900D is going after processing, but Sony's going after 4,000 nits. Think about that for a second, right? So they're all going in different directions. We don't want them to look the same. That's why I'm, I'm saying Classy didn't calibrate those TVs, and I'm not criticizing him at all. Amazing work. I want to see what they can do separately and, on, and with, their, with their just presets matched, see how they look. And yep. I want them to out of the look box. different. Mm -hmm. Out of the box, I want to see them look different. And that's what their demo material showed. You know, it did show. And now, if it's the Evo panel, is it that pink tint that's still there? Is that part of the chemistry? Could be. I'm not really, other than I think the G2 FOMO, was it the G2 we saw at the first year at 65? We saw that pink a lot. I haven't noticed it. My thing is going to be, how are we going to do the, the banding? That's what I need to see is how that uh, 12, 15% gray banding is. And I couldn't see it from my time with it, but I need some gaming to see how it looks. Because uh, to me, that's the biggest problem with WRGB OLEDs. And we'll see if it's solved this year. And Mankite or Mankite, how you pronounce it, uh, has yeah, a great you know, question. You got a little spice for that? <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a, it could be a foreign name. I don't want to be hurting anyone's feelings. So I'll it's say Mankite. Man it's Mankite. Mankite. From uh, uh, Eastern Africa. Uh, super chat from Mankite. G4 Shadow Detail versus Sony Mini LED Prototype at CES. So, I've seen the Sony Mini LED Prototype at CES. I've seen the G4. However, we didn't see them side by side. Now, we do know that the G4 Shadow Detail appears to be better. I will tell you that the G3 Shadow Detail, near black, it crushes. They appear to have fixed that out of the box, which is awesome. The Sony Mini LED specifically was designed for shadow detail. Now, blooming perfect blacks, that's a different matter. The G4's infinite contrast combined with, on paper, improved shadow detail should still be better than any LCD TV, even if it's the Sony Mini LED. Remember, the Sony Mini LED prototype wasn't designed to give you better shadow detail necessarily than OLED. It was designed to beat OLED at 4,000 nit content. Yeah. Full screen, let's say full screen image is 500 nits, and then you have specular highlights at 4,000 nits. No OLED can do that. That's what the Mini LED prototype was designed to do. The G4 cannot do that. But if you're looking at content below 100 nits, I believe the G4, probably the G3, once calibrated, will beat the Sony Mini LED. So, Mankite, ask yourself, what content are you watching if it's 
mostly content under 100 nits, which is most things, SDR or HDR, right? Under 500 nits, I mean. If it's graded under 500 nits, the G4, G3 will look better than the Sony Mini LED. If it is content specifically graded to show off 4,000 specular highlights on an amazing bright APL of you know 400, then you're gonna have something to show off with a mini LED. So use the TV for your use case. Great question. Thank you for that, well, well, Mankite. Well, I'll tell you right now, we have 537 in chat. What? We do? Oh, so, is it time for a, a click like, everyone? I love click it. Click like, but I hope you guys, I'll say thank you to you guys. We've had an amazing start to our TV year, but all of our discussions, our tech therapy videos, our lives, um, live streams we've had, we've had such good engagement with you guys. We really appreciate it, um, but you're showing us that this year is gonna be unbelievable. My video from the G4 has 20,000 views in 24 hours. Um, that's a massive for me. You guys are really turning out, and this is when the TVs actually start showing up. So like, San like Sony's approach, Seeing that prototype FOMO, seeing how intricate the local dimming is, they're trying to go for micro contrast with a mini LED and then bring the brightness up. So they're not just going 4,000 nits. That local dimming has never been seen that way. So if they can get you close FOMO to that depth with the peak brightness, with their processing, then it'll be everything the other mini LEDs aren't. Yeah. Right? So that's what I love that they're going back to. But, but who would have guessed that FOMO eight months ago? And we're talking about the A95L. Oh, by the way, we had a great win. Let's go over here. I know, we're done. So, well, you... <laughs> <laughs> yep. so I, I just think it's these storylines are so important, guys. That's why we're excited. I mean, that's why we're, we're not hyping things up. I'm hype. I'm in L.A. right now. Yes, you, know, you are in L.A. because I'm we're going to have right lobster now. and steak to celebrate. Yeah, I mean, I can't say why I'm in L.A., but I'm in L.A. It's just things are happening, but being able to bring you guys this kind of content before we even see anything, right? I mean, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just we're, we're such just happy that you guys are here. I really appreciate you. 500 of you guys watching us just do a, a live stream Talking about the G4 and the Samsung. Well, you know what? You, you mentioned the TV makers. I want to give them a shout out because this Absolutely. year, this year they realized that we're not just influencers, but rather the information we give you guys is actually important. And they love how we focused on what they feel is important in their TV. It's not just about the numbers. It's not just about mm -hmm. measurements, right? They said, look, for the first time, we have reviewers who understand our use case, keep doing what you're doing. And so all the TV makers this year have focused on showing us, meaning anyone who's discussing TVs in this way, that it's not just about the nits, right? We always talk about being a nit nerd or the peak brightness, and then it turns out, wait a minute. But then in this scene, it looks terrible because it's clipping. It's super bright, but it's clipping. When we recognize those things, you know, the engineers are like, yes, Brian saw that. Yes, FOMO yeah. saw that. And Thank and you for and seeing this hard work. And that's what's so important, I would say, guys, this year going forward. When you have somebody like a, like a classy really going in their deep dive, he finds something, he discovers something. Now the engineers want to know straight from him. They want to know straight from us. We can speak directly to them. And what, mm -hmm. seeing them on my channel, they want to speak directly to you. That has never happened. They're not coming on just to sell something. They're coming on to say, hey, guess this is what's happening. So I kind of have the go ahead with some of these guys to say, hey, look, if you hear an issue like Dolby Vision, which they are working on, I've got that straight from Sony to say they are working on it. Yes. But we're getting it straight from them, not somebody from marketing from them we hear you so you're so what you see from lg is because they're listening not just to us but they listen to us because it's you from us if that makes sense you're speaking through us we're not doing a review oh this gets a 7.5 uh see you later it's us doing these these conversations classy doing his thing you guys 500 these comments are up there they see them they read them so it's so important that you guys say what you feel, what you want to see. And that's how they're basing a lot of what they do. It's not our impact. It's your impact and your engagement. But I, I've never seen a company companies move so quickly. But guys, this will mean that even like firmware updates will be able to be steered by videos we do. 
if something is broken, they're going to want to hear, hey, that didn't work. Yeah. They're not used to hearing it so quickly. Yep. So we don't Absolutely. have, we can make, you know, so now we'll be able to say, hey, you know what? There's an issue with Dolby Vision. Oh, there is? I can make a yeah. phone call now and say, hey, guys, this is what, this is the word on the street. That's pretty yeah. cool. I mean, that's, it's not because we have pull. They want to know. And it's not because I'm anything special or FOMO is anything special. They oh, want to know. don't lie. You're special, man. I'm special. <laughs> but they want to know. So, I mean, yep. it's just, it's a really cool time. It's the first time in our industry, this TV industry, where it can move quickly. Yes. Speakers no, come out every five years. Receivers every five years. TVs are an every year thing. It's amazing the innovations. So and, and it's not look at the, one company. No, but Foma, look at the Sony game bar. Right, the Sony Game Bar, they updated that for the A95L. Then they updated it. Well, we talked. Rob Brennan was on a channel. We talked about it being a priority. Guess what? Within a few weeks, they updated the A95K and the Z9K. They're able to. It's they were able to listen to their audience, and that's what you guys are doing by showing up here. You're the audience saying what you want to see, and your criticisms. Oh, oh by the way, they're they're always they're lurking. I didn't know that, but Sony, Samsung, and LG. Much are in the audience it's it's running through their google translate and they're playing it back in korea japan everywhere where their executives are in english here because yeah. they want to know what the comments are they want to know our reaction to the comments they want to know what triggers you guys and so the, one of the reasons i run these live stream is after the live stream sometimes they call me and say hey you know, we heard this, such and such. Did they try this fix and so forth? And I can tell them, actually, they did, and it did not work, right? So, yeah. Now, yeah. let's get to uh, Josh Super Chat. Thank you for your patience, Josh. I have a Z9K. Not happy with the picture. What Blu-ray player do you recommend or should I upgrade? And what mini LED do you recommend? So, Josh, the a lot to unpack here. So, you're thinking it's a Blu-ray player. The good news is it's probably not your Blu-ray player, right? Uh, so, if you yeah, have a quality Blu-ray player, I'm assuming like the Panasonic UBA20, 9000, uh, those are the two best out there, or the Revon, or the that other one, the Magnetar. As long as it's giving you a clean signal, which most Blu-ray players do. And the issue is first, is it putting out Dolby Vision? And is the Z9K struggling with Dolby Vision, right? That's question number one, because Sony has had issues with Dolby Vision. You need, you may need to calibrate that Z9K to see Dolby Vision correctly. Now, if it's for other reasons, the Z9K is not an OLED TV. The best image quality is gonna come from OLED, even though the Z9K is brighter, most of the stuff that's coming off disc it doesn't need it to be 3,000 nits or 2,000 nits, however bright the Z9K can get. Now, sure. if you do wanna preserve that brightness, wait for the Sony Uber XR 90 XR Ultra. We don't know what the name is, but the flagship Sony 85 inch is coming out this year. It is the 4000 at Mini LED with a focus on everything. It's updated its entire processing system, everything. This is going to be its flagship this year, and it will be better than the Z9K. So that's what I would recommend because you're used to Sony, you're used to Sony colors out of the box. Out of the box, this will be consistent with that expectation. But uh, well, yeah, Josh, what kind of content are you watching? Prime? Yeah, well, for Josh, I mean, quickly, obviously, a new TV is not an answer for you. You have the Z9K, one of the best TVs out there. I would guarantee you it's a settings thing for you. The Z9K is a monster. It is brute force. That's why the X95 is half as bright, but a better TV because the local dimming is just much better. Um, but the Z9K is still a monster. I promise you, let me just tell us what issue you're having and what you don't like. And I bet you, you can go into custom. You can mm -hmm. go into the Could ambient light sensor. There are things that I'm sure you can change. You might be seeing too much blooming. The Z9K does bloom. You just need to go and make sure that that local dimming, it ships in medium. Is, is on. <laughs> yeah, but it ships in medium. So, yes. you know, if you're in the standard preset, you can stay in standard, back it down. Try going into custom. Really get into those presets, Josh. I guarantee you, you'll like that TV. I just think that the brute force of it is probably turning you off. So please follow up. You don't need to super chat it. Just follow up what um, was Josh. Just follow up what you don't like about it, and we'll try to help you. Because I don't want you Absolutely. to buy something else. The Z9K is an animal. I think you'll Absolutely. you'll grow to like it. Thank you for the super chat, Terry. Ordered so, Terry. S89C for 1799. Great price. Currently at Best Buy, 1800 for a 77 inch QD OLED. Phenomenal. Highly recommended. I can get the 85 inch Q90C at 1919 so a little bit larger 
Daytime watching on retired, lots of sports, movies at night. Fairly controlled lighting. Currently watching on a 75-inch QLED. 77 will be slightly larger. You're going to enjoy that large. I think the image quality in the S89C is quite a jump. I definitely recommend it. And then when you're ready to upgrade again, go to an 83-inch QD OLED. So this is one time where I'm not going to tell you to go large. I'm going to tell you because the S89C from the QLED is so good. And I'm okay with you enjoying that goodness because fairly controlled lighting. The S89C is definitely bright enough for sports. And it'll be brighter than your three-year-old QLED, thankfully. So that would be my recommendation. It's And you save a couple of hundred. The 85-inch Q90C, go for size, but the image quality is definitely a step down from QD OLED. Brian, do you agree or do you disagree? I do agree. I concur. I concur. Absolutely. All right. Quickly, back and... to Josh. Josh, if you're still hanging out. Yes. My boy Terry is in the comments. You'll see 69 Dartman, who has the Z9K. Loves it. Link up with him in these comments, um, yes. and I'm sure Terry will help you out. So Terry's awesome. Been part of the channel, both our channels for years. Um, try to link up with him in the comments, and he'll be able to help you because the Z9K is a monster. I hate you to. I hate for you to think that that TV's not good. It's have excellent. the right settings first, right? So get the right settings, and then if it still doesn't work out, you can move on. Absolutely. <laughs> the wine. What? What is that? that? You got free wine. wine? No, they're all closed. I thought it looked good when you're talking. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hundred dollars a bottle. No, I, 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 I got It's a, it's a lush, a lush special. Hey, Ted, <laughs> thanks for the super chat. Should I get an LG G3 TV at Best Buy? It's a great TV. If it's a good price, yes, but also consider the S89C. So tell us what is your use case. But I do like the G3 for primarily three reasons. One, it has a five-year panel warranty. Uh, LG is a proven brand with its OLED. You're going to least likely get burn-in with an LG G3 than any other model out there. And at Best Buy currently this year, or right now, they're being discounted heavily as the G4 is being launched. So without knowing anything further, generally speaking, if you're looking for an OLED, you can't go wrong with the G3. But I need to know it a little bit more. Ted, what is your use case? How big do you want to go? But what do you think? <laughs> Look at the comments. Where am I? Um, <laughs> somebody just called me a heathen. Bigger list. Is that you? A heathen? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, I have a heathen on, on, on live stream with me. Brian's a heathen. <laughs> and then Terry goes, uh, Darkman goes, ah, the old Brian. Because I used to do some of these streams a little uh, feeling pretty nice. I haven't even eaten yet. Well, oh, my God, I haven't here. even eaten yet. I'm oh, my God. You exactly. didn't eat and you had an empty wine bottle. I love it. Uh, hey, long play. Unoya Visuals. Super chat. Thank you, my friend. What TV do you think will be better, cheaper, the 2023 TCL QM8 or the 2024 QM7? I'm really torn between the two. So the QM7 is essentially the QM8 in performance. That's what I've been told. Now, not having a oh, yeah. test and compare, I cannot affirm, but I can tell you the QM7 was designed to be identical to the QM8. I'm sure there are minor differences, but with the QM7, you're always going to get updated hardware here and there. So let's wait to see what the price is for the, two, the 2024 QM7. You might be able to get the QM8 for a sweetheart deal, then get the cheaper QM8. But they should be very similar. Get the cheaper one once the QM7 is released. But the QM7 is definitely supposed to perform very similarly to the QM8. So, yes. That's gonna be a, I think that's going to be a great update from the Q7. Because you liked the Q7 last year not being mini LED. Could you imagine how it's going to be now that it's got that QM8 performance with the, the tweaking they're doing to the processing? Because, yes. guys, you got to understand, Hisense and TCL, what we heard from their reps was they know processing, 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 processing. So they're all trying to get that special sauce. So you should see improvements from all of them. And they're very close. Yes. Well, close to earth to where they were. Because these guys are pulling away again. Uh, Ted... Ted S, giving a bit more detail, 
whether the G3 is perfect for him. He watches sports and watches movies. So if you watch my earlier videos, the G3 is my sports watching TV of 2023. It actually was as bright, if not brighter, than some of my mini LED TVs. That was just crazy yeah. in standard mode. And so you get all of the processing and the motion advantages of the LG G3 without the crazy OS issues of Google TV or Roku. You know how I feel about Roku this year, this week, or Fire TV. So I, I prefer WebOS other than the third-party OS's. Uh, but since G3 does have burn-in and which model should I purchase, don't matter the brand. So the G3 has a, is the only TV with a guarantee of panel replacement if you get burn-in in five years, right? So that's their guarantee. That's why we recommend it as well. And your budget is $2,500. Now, that budget can get you a S89C, but then the guarantee against Burnin isn't there, and the G3 is actually brighter in sports content. Yeah, I would. Yeah. And so I'd stick with the G3. If you've never had OLED before, enjoy the G3. It's it's a keeper, especially if you just watch sports movies. You're not super critical. I think it's fine. Uh, you'll be okay with that. Two thousand twenty five hundred. You're right there. Well, in Formula Two, one thing that Greg also said that he does, and that's from you know him, is actually in a bright room, he puts the TVs in vivid. Right, because it's that efficient, they puts it in vivid. He back he obviously changes the color to warm, and then backs down the sharpness, and finds that it's pretty accurate when it's in a bright room, even in vivid. And that's what I think is so good about their presets. When they go into vivid and even standard, they're not so blown out. But what he's saying is again, not in a dark room, but in a bright room to combat that glare. Don't be afraid to jump into that preset. Just change the color temperature from cold to warm and back down your sharpness and um, it'll be something you can also use. So cool little things like that is what he talked about. Absolutely. It's about. And just real quick, Alex, which TV you recommend for gaming that is not going to break the bank at 65 inches? The Q7. Q7 is going to be, what, six dollars $700? Not going to break the bank. Good enough for gaming. Now, if your budget is more than that, then maybe a jump up to I don't know, Q7 is such a good value at under a thousand for gaming but you would have to go to OLED to have a big jump or Samsung Samsung Q70 will have what you need for gaming it's going to be a bit more feature rich than the Q7 but the Q7 is really a value gaming TV for console gaming in my opinion Brian what do you think for not breaking the bank any opinions on uh, value gaming TVs I mean it's we talked about this with the sharp FOMO I and mean, if you can swing an OLED, then I would go. But the UAK and the TCL having 144 hertz, that does work now. Um, it's just that there are many LEDs. I like the QM8 FOMO just because it's got that more saturated yes. pop for gaming. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say, and I would say too, Alex, I much rather, even though we love the X90 from Sony, I much rather see you go with a higher end U7K, Q7, QM8. Get those features, get that, that good gaming bar, and enjoy them. Don't go, I, I usually don't like going with the bargain brand of the high, like right now is a Samsung behind me. I don't know <laughs> what that is, but, I, but I have my demo material on it. You know I'm dedicated. I love it. Right? I love it. So my point is, some people would buy that TV versus a Hisense flagship or second tier down. U7K last year, U, uh, Q7, excellent. I would definitely go for those. What's up, The okay. O? How are you? Hey, The O. O for oxygen. Hey, Brian, currently have the C1 55-inch. Planning on mm -hmm. upgrading to the 83-inch G4. Ooh, MLA. Love you. How Love big you. of a jump is that processor from the C1? Oh, Brian, you have a lot to say. It's easy. It's actually easy. Um, Fomo and I talked about this. We did an A90J versus C2 comparison. And the A90J was processing wise better than the CX and obviously the C1. And then what do we see FOMO? C2 caught up to it. Then I have the A80L at 83 inches, which is a jump over the A90J. Same chassis, new processor. Well, keep in mind, so what I'm saying to you is that the C1 is behind the A90J in terms of processing. The A80L beats the A90J well, now the G4 beats them all because they, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't just, you know, do you see what I'm saying to you? The leap yeah. is not from the G3 to the G4, though I think that's a big jump in processing. My point is you're jumping all the way from a C1. It's going to be noticeable, very noticeable you get, for you. Get you get size, you get MLA, yeah. you get processing. Yeah, you're going to be mean, blown away. 
And though you're in the best position, my friend, because you're going to a mass 83 size is epic. I can never go down. And I was very close when the S90 S95 C came out at 77 foam. We had that conversation in 95 L. I cannot go back down in size. I love the 83 inch size so much. I haven't jumped to 85 because I don't want to go back down to 83 when these OLEDs have MLA or QD OLEDs. But the O, oh, I'm jealous right now because you're going from, and I think that the C1 is awesome. I still love mine. It's you're a great OLED. Brightness, mm -hmm. You're getting flexibility, you're getting size, and you're getting processing. It's, it's, yep. the and, thing and if, just, you, if you game, 144 hertz gaming. Ooh. And wanting 44 hertz to the body. No one connect box. Yeah. Um, you know, they're working on their G Sync. You know, they're right now they're G Sync certified. And then I think once they get a certain update, they're, they're G Sync. And there's a couple arguably, of different levels of it. Arguably, the best Dolby Vision in the business is going to be on the G4. So, I no, I want to. You want to talk a little bit about Dolby Vision? Uh, I do. Let me hit Christian and Buddy, and we'll jump into it. Christian, but what's yes. up? Are we going to see Christian hey, and Christian. Wave this year? Yeah, Christian, you're coming to M Wave? Everyone, M Wave, Kansas City, first, second Join week us of for June. Join us for M Wave, man. Yes. Oh, and when be you fire. go, when you go buy your tickets at M Wave, if you enter FOMO in the coupon code, you will get a discount. Thanks to Brian and I, we have connections <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> you're gonna uh, go ahead get tickets uh, at M Wave and enter FOMO code, and we'll give you something special. When you get yeah, it. I'll give you gloves. Come, come, and come, meet, come and meet us. Come and meet us. And, yeah. and before, before we go to Christian, because Christian was there last year. Um, and Christian saw that was our first, well, my first time doing M Wave, almost second time. But we did change the presets. We did go in. We had them calibrated last year. But the ability to say, you know, Christian, say Christian's looking at a specific TV, hand them the remote. That's something we can't do with the value electronic shootout because they're they're matched to a reference monitor. They're, it's yes. very exact. This is like you want to see gaming. Here it is. You want to see this? Here it is. So yeah. you're able to meet us, hang out with us. You don't have to come in for a few minutes. Put your stuff down and show with us. Yep. And We're we'll there show you how all the settings work. You know, we'll, yep. we'll do all of that. Hang out with us. Definitely. Hang out with us. So go ahead, Christian. Good to see you, my man. I watched Dune 2 in Dolby Cinema twice. I, too, watched I can't wait Dolby to see Cinema. It. It's great. The sound was so good. A giant screen. I want that at home. A 110 to 120-inch TV is the smallest I can go. <laughs> Should I wait next year for TCL's 14,000 Zone Beast? Yes, Christian, these super large TVs at 110, 115 inches is only going to drop in price. Once you see Americans, USA, yeah. buying up these TVs at 100 inch plus, they're going to drop in price and get better. So definitely that is the trend. Now, let's talk about Dolby Cinema. Part of the reason why it's so good is it's those shaky seats, right? Whether it's D-Box, I don't know which technology they're using. But because the subwoofers cannot fill up that giant room. You cannot pressurize a cinema, like a true cinema with subwoofers that will blow up their 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 electric electricity bills. They have to use the shaky seats. So, you know, they got subs, but their subs will probably, if you're lucky, goes down to maybe below 50, right? Maybe 40 if you're lucky. Everything else is in those shaking seats. So Christian, you can get some of that Dolby Cinema impact if you can find the technology and build yourself those shaky seats that will rumble below 30 hertz. But definitely, I love the effects in Dune 2. I cannot wait to check out the effects once it's released on Cloud Escape or Disc. Yeah, we will see you at M Wave. Thank you, Christian. And well, and Christian really show. liked the QM8 last year. Oh, he did. Um, yeah. And the QM8 was one of the stars last year when people walked in, like Christian and guys that are really, it's a buddy, guys that are really into projectors. We were both shocked because they have the eye, they know what they're looking at. But think about what projectors lack. They walked in, they're like, oh my, what is that? And it was going against a G3 and um, an A95K. And the 115 is going to be an absolute monster, but it's going to be, well, it's still going to be cheaper than a projector. It might be 15, yep. 15, mm -hmm. 18K at launch. Yep. It's going to drop. Yep. What's up, buddy? Agree. So, buddy has a great comment. And, and this is something we're going to have to sit and ponder. I'm over I here laughing. It, I'm laughing because folks were saying LG is done when QD OLED <laughs> hit the market. And now the G4 is the cat's pajamas. And what does this mean? It means software processing is so important. The yeah. number one complaint I get from all these TVs, how do I get my motion better? FOMO, can you help me with this motion setting? That is a distraction. So when it comes to me, when it comes to audio or video, let's start with removing all the distractions, right? For the Samsung, I thought the anti-glare 
brilliant. It removes the distraction. And here, LG is removing the distraction of bad motion settings that you don't get right. And Sony removed the distraction by making XR clear. So suddenly everything looks a little bit more popular. Right? Like, wow, this feels like HDR, even though it may not be creator's intent. That's all software. That wasn't QD OLED doing the magic. XR clear was applied to X90L and the A80L. And LG learned something. It's And that, this is why I told LG, stop working so hard on the hardware stuff, honestly, they didn't need to release an updated MLA G3, uh, G4, right? But they did, and it's a little bit brighter, and I appreciate it. But had they stuck with the same MLA, which is still bright, and just focused on the software this year, it still would have left an impression. But they did both, so thank you, LG, for that. Unfortunately, by doing both, the price did not drop. So we'll see what they do next yeah. year. Yeah. But well, my hope is software, software. Yeah, well, in the narrative too, FOMO, we talked about not just last year, maybe the beginning of last year, that we thought that we'd be in an OLED arm race, which means they all look <laughs> the yes. same, right? So we did videos saying that LEDs were dead, and we're not just coming up with clickbait. This is what the industry is doing. I mean, these this, mini this LEDs. This is what Korea. This is what Korea is saying. Korea is this like, is what they're wait, doing. They're, they're, I mean, we it went, was dead, and now they're alive. Yeah. So, but you understand though, these, and I've always said this. That's what was so great about Hisense and TCL being so aggressive. Mm -hmm. They're catching up. These companies have to pivot. LG was ahead for so long with their OLEDs. They were the only game in town. They had MLA years ago. They, they unlocked it a little too late. Now they're pivoting back to QNED. That's not a coincidence. They're doing that because they see the trend changing. Now, that could change back from them. If these big TVs that are amazing and cheap, they bomb or they flame out, Okay, people can go back to this. It's not a plasma thing. You're not going to see them die out. But these narratives push these companies to make changes. It's, it's definitely make... a, a price, a price thing. OLED has not dropped in price, and they've saturated oh, the market for that price. Like the market for people who could afford a $2,000 TV, right? So 65 inch OLED on average is between 1600 to 2000 plus for a flagship. That's not, that hasn't changed for three years now. And I think that's the issue. Yeah. So, well, I just yeah. think it's I just think it's a great time because I thought we were actually going to be bored. Oh no, there is that I, it was going to be OLED versus OLED versus OLED versus OLED because they can only yes. go so far. Now, saying that, seeing Shiraga Samsung display, seeing what they can actually do with the raw tech, there's they they can go easy four thousand nets, easy five thousand nets at some point. Absolutely. So the future is very bright. We just need size, but then monitors, the, the implementation of what LG is doing with monitors, Samsung is doing with monitors, Sony is doing mon like they're all, they're ramping up. You might see a simplification of their lineups just because they're trying to make things easier for the consumer. Um, but I think we have, it's a better time than I can remember in many years. Yep. Agreed. This is a great age looking? for value. If, if your budget's $1,000 or $5,000, it's the best time to buy a TV. Ted follows up, just asking which one is better, the G3 or the A80L. The G3 is definitely a tier higher than the A80L. A80L is good, but A80L was designed to beat the C3. The G3 has MLA, the A80L doesn't. The G3 will be brighter, and the G3, it's it, everything about it, the cosmetics, it's got the five-year panel warranty. It's going to have a more effective heat sink. It will be more durable because it's designed to go against the A95L. So the A80L is a good TV, but you're comparing two different tiers. So better, but you're taking overall better, right? The, the whole, the case, cosmetics. Now, the only thing that the A80L is probably going to do better is the audio. I felt the G3 audio was just anemic. So if you get the G3, you get a soundbar, but I don't think you're going to buy the A80L just for the audio, right? So what are your thoughts? You've seen both, Brian. A is the G3 better than the A80L? I think so. I mean, the G3, again, we it sounds ridiculous, but they are designed to compete with certain models. The A80L, what set it apart was being the only OLED that had XR clear, other than the A75L, obviously. The A95L being a a tier up in being the most expensive, the A80L was alone because the C-Series didn't have MLA. And yeah. Samsung didn't have anything other than a WRGB OLED. So the A80L in theory with XR Clear actually could beat the S90C for a lot of people watching regular streaming content. 
But the G3 is just a step above because it's got a good processor and it's very bright and it's just more premium than the A80L. A80L though, you're looking at A80L price of 83 versus the 77 inch G3. That's where it wins is if you're yes. a size up. 65 versus 55, that's the way to play the price game, everyone. You like the UAK? Go with a 75 inch U7K if you can get the size. Um, I don't ever recommend getting the smallest, best looking TV because I think you guys are going to feel like they're too small. And no, let's, let's get this balanced comment in because many of you who are enthusiasts know that LG is still using W OLED or WRGB OLED, right? <laughs> so the real most disliked channel, and, and he's creating more friends, right? M Mr. Most Disliked Channel. LG OLEDs are still W OLEDs. I'm not counting them as real OLEDs. So LG's W OLED technology was the very first OLED technology that solved the burn-in problem. It continues to be the best technology if you're afraid of burn-in because they've spent so much time fine-tuning that. That's not to say QD OLED is that much worse, but people are saying maybe, right? So yeah. here's the thing. W OLED is slightly older. It's amazing what LG has been able to do by layering superior processing on it. It's still an OLED, although it is a white subpixel. It does require a color filter. It does have a polarizer. All of that does dilute the color saturation and the brightness a little bit, thus MLA neutralizes that, whereas QD OLED is a more direct way of viewing OLED TVs because it doesn't have a color filter, it has a color converting layer, that is the QD, which is more direct, right? They don't have a polarizer, so the con, it's, although they're both infinite contrast, the color luminance, the color saturation, at, at brighter, at brighter luminances are better on QD OLED, but most content do not take advantage of that. And that's why a lot of the times when you see us compare streaming, they both look identical. So until content really takes advantage of QD OLED, even if it's not the real OLED, or, or rather the older W OLED, you are not gonna notice a big difference. And given the move, the cinematic movement setting this year, that may be the game changer for many people. What are your thoughts on so, being a real OLED? Well, then the, here's, you know, Jamie Rolo has a great comment where he says, unless you need to be in the 83 inch category, Brian, a 95 l will still be the king QD OLED, simply better than the W. Yes, the A95L QD OLED is. However, the A80L can compete with the S90 QD OLED at the same size for, as FOMO was saying, regular TV watching, meaning streaming, upscaling. Not everything is going to show that wider color gamut or more color. Not every They look virtually the same in a lot of content. And I would argue Sony's processing is above Samsung's. So you can say that all you like. We sit with them and say, okay, but in this particular content that the majority of people watch, that A80L will still look better. Now in demo material where it will show it, you'll see the QD OLED pull away. But these are the yin and yangs. It's not as simple as that. The processing on the G series does put it above. MLA is not just white pushing hard. There is more to it than that. And I'll tell you, I just did an FS1 video for Sharp um, the thing blew me away. It's just a WRGB yeah. OLED. So my point is, I think we're taking OLED for granted, that it's like old hat. They're still incredible. What I like about OLED is even the cheapest B series, A series, still looks better than an LED. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I so agree. It's that I think we're contrast. getting a little. I think we're getting a little spoiled. Even a dim OLED is still brighter than the best OLEDs in the world five years ago. So I get what you're saying, but I mean, to dismiss it like that doesn't matter to me. You can do that all day. You're missing out on some amazing products doing that, though, especially if you haven't spent time with all of them. I would spend as much time as you can with all of them. And speaking of spending time, too much time, the G3 at his local Best Buy, Matt Pistol says it was burning like crazy. So to give a context, Matt Pistol, every TV, including the G3, has what's called store mode or a demo mode, and the store mode really doesn't care if it burns in or not. The whole purpose of store mode is to sell TVs. So what it does is it super brightens and super saturates. Basically, it blows the TV up in terms of exuding heat so it could sell TVs. You should not be watching your TV in store mode because if you do, yes, 
it's probably going to burn in. And I have my doubts that storm mode even has burn in prevention activated because by the end of the year, Best Buy is going to get rid of these TVs. So they don't care if it doesn't last more than 18 months, right? Clearly it didn't. So <laughs> Mad Pistol, yeah. the question is, is it going to burn in if you watch it in filmmaker mode? You're changing content. But for sure, in storm mode, it's going to burn in. Yeah. No doubt well, not it. just that, Matt. But not just that, Matt. Pistol. There's the retail mode, which is more like a vivid mode, right? Mm -hmm. It's yep, not same. even that. It's what's the loop that's being played. How quick is that loop? If that loop is three minutes and it hits again and again and again, if the TV's not shut off at the source, they shut it off with the all at once. That TV's not getting its pixel refresh. That's what happened with the C9 and those other ones. Is that that same quick Best Buy demo was smacking it. It was the same as leaving the same logo on screen. So you can leave it on Vivid all you want. You just can't have a, a, a minute and a half demo. LG's demos are two minutes long. They try to keep them not red, those bright reds. So it's not really just the fact that it's in Vivid. It's not being shut off by the TV. It's not going into its pixel refresh, which it does all the time now. Um, it's not called that anymore. It's called something else. But it, all the safeguards that the G series has in place can't happen with those loops. Right, mm, the agreed. G series yeah. will the G series dims when it's static, and it dims when it senses something's happening. That store's loop is not doing that, so it's actually tricking the TV into burning itself in over twelve hours a day, seven days a week. So the fact that they'll cover them for five years shows me they're not afraid. Nope. Because why would they cover them? That five year is the key to knowing that LG is willing to replace your panel if it yeah. burns in. Because yep. under normal use, they're fine. And so SB Digital, if you missed my initial opening comments, which was addressing this specifically, who's all going to take a gamble on Samsung's QD OLED W OLED panel lottery this year? So if you guys just joined us, I'm going to share with you that Samsung did reach out to me to clarify things. So I can tell you this, and more details will come. All OLED TVs launching this week will be QD OLED. And there may be some S90D sizes launching this week. If you see S90D launching this week, all sizes announced this week will be QD OLED. So we know the S95D for sure is QD OLED. So many people say, oh, what if you know, we don't see any S90D this week? Well, then you got your answer. But anything launching this week, later this week, Samsung has confirmed they are only launching QD OLED models this week, whatever it ends up being. And so why didn't I get in more detail? Because my Samsung, my contact at Samsung, who's authorized to tell me that, was not given any more detail as soon as he gets more detail. And this is how close they are holding it to the vest, right? We don't even have pricing and model sizes yet. But as soon as he gets all of that for launch this week, I will share it with you when I'm allowed. And then you will know for sure that these TVs will be QD OLED. So hopefully that gives you some hope that in the USA, at least, we might not be getting the panel lottery as feared, but we will definitely get confirmation by the end of this week exactly what models and sizes will be QD OLED from Samsung. So, and, and they were, believe me when I said they've been on this for the last two weeks when we heard that they were mixing it. So he's, I uh, can't tell you his name, but at Samsung, he's been hunting down the necessary authorities at Samsung to confirm this because he says, guys, you guys want to screw up your sales? Keep them in the dark. And so they want to give you as much clarity as possible. Thank you. For, well, quickly, for those who just joined us, boom, there's your answer. Well, quickly stay, stepping back to the, the OLED and Burnin. I yes. honestly don't think I honestly don't think it should be a deciding factor for you guys anymore. Um, if you like the picture quality of a mini LED or wait, it's wait, brighter let's, let's, or it's let's repeat that. You don't think that burn-in should be a deciding factor when deciding on an OLED anymore. Why is or that? Because that, that's a, a huge TV. statement to make on a TV. On a TV anymore. Not, not a TV I, displaying I on at the airport or at a bar. At yeah, home. so I mean, LCDs burn in that way with, with when you see that. And we Actually, saw let's, let's pause right there. LCD TVs also over time have burn-in or worse. Their uniformity gets worse over time. OLED actually does not get worse or as badly as LCD. So given five years, your LCD TV may look even worse over time and yeah. may be more distracting than burn-in. And this is what ratings, artings for many of you, has confirmed. They've definitively said, look, 
OLED may be a problem, but we'll tell you this, LCD TVs are not better. It's actually more distracting when we pushed it to their limits in their very exactly. challenging longevity. So that's so it's context. Go ahead, Brian. Exactly. But what we have is in the chat, and we do read them all, is we have people that they want the best possible picture quality. And they'll say, I love this image. However, due to this fear, and then we still see it in these comments now, um, the fear of burning, which we've all been afraid of. And you see my video where I actually, a uh, most dislike channel referenced that video. If you are nervous about playing the same game over and over, that's the same content, same with news channels, same thing over and over. Now in gaming, that makes sense, FOMO, or somebody who watches a lot of news, you turn the TV on, you watch the news, that TV might only see that content. NFL Red Zone is the same thing. Maybe you only watch it on the weekends. The simple step I do for peace of mind is I create a playlist of something like Jennifer's full screen. Run a three minute demo. If you wanna really feel good about getting all those pixels firing, that's not a lot to ask to have the best picture quality in the world. Now, considering I'm the guy that is now the guy that said that OLEDs were dead three weeks ago, people were worried about that. I'm saying I still buy them myself. So it's like, not to do as I say, not as I do. What I'm trying to say to you is that each one of these has value, but choose it yeah. on picture quality and value of what you can afford versus yeah. burning. It's an old story I think needs to finally be put to bed. And, and those of you who are choosing LCD just because of burn-in, don't be surprised that, wait a minute, it didn't turn on anymore because TVs breaks, also yeah. break. It, it, it may break before burn-in becomes an issue. Just something to think about. Hey, TS, Charlie is cool. Thank you for the super chat. 65-inch A90J versus the 75-inch X95L. Wow. Two different TVs. So the A90J was OLED TV that won the shootout way back when. I say way back then, when it was, what, three and a half years ago? So it is an OLED TV, but it is slightly dimmer. The X95L will be brighter. Two diff different use cases. First, the 75 inch is larger. You're going to get a larger TV. Second, what is it you watch? If you watch mostly TV shows, old, older TV shows, streaming, you're not into HDR, A90J looks fine. But if you're watching bright sports, you're in a bright room, you gotta, you gotta get over that glare or that brightness in your room, you need to go with the X95L because it will get to that brightness. But in light controlled room with just normal SDR content, the A90J infinite contrast will always look better. So you didn't give me enough information, it's Charlie Cool. Tell us, how's the brightness in your room? What is it you watch? What kind of content? Is it streaming SDR? Is it over the air satellite? If it's over-the-air antenna stuff, get the A90J. You'll love it. But if it's a lot of bright sports in a bright room, Brian, what is, what is, your, what is your suggestion for Charlie Cool? That's, I'll tell you, Charlie, that's, that gives you such perspective on how legendary the A90J was. That people... Yeah. Again, it was the king of TVs room, three years ago, it yeah? Was, it was <laughs> the king of TVs. But that it's still such an amazing TV. It really is. I mean, it is excellent. I still see it all the time, think it's awesome. The X95L is better at that size difference by a fair margin. That's a massive difference. Plus, the A90J does not have XR clear. The X95L does. And the X95L has the best local dimming Sony has ever shown, at least until this year. So you're not going to have a lot of blooming. And it's just, uh, and the A90J is at this point, you're paying strictly for the name. And that's something I would never recommend doing. As you see, our friend Josh who bought the Z9K may have bought that TV because it was the hot TV. Nobody cares about you having a hot TV. You're stuck with it if you're buying something that's a couple of years old. And now you're looking at generations of processors that if we discussed this whole thing, FOMO, the processors make the difference in almost everything. So I would definitely go with the newer TV, especially at 75. I think you'd be very happy. Agreed, agreed. And we have a super chat from a regular, Sika. I think when they capitalize the K, I have to pronounce it Sika. Got a burned in 55 inch B6 looking at the 83 inch G4. Oh, you're gonna love it. Came close to buying the 77 inch G3, but the colors looked washed out versus the A95L. How much better is the G4 on colors? It's better. The question is, is it as good as the A95L? So color luminous on QD OLED, I'm really gonna have to compare it. I'll get the G4. 65 inch, I have the A95L 65 inch. You will know definitively, don't jump the gun. If you really, because I know Seek now, you are very sensitive to this one issue. Is my G4 going to have the same pop? Remember the A95L 
the A95L has XR clear. So it purposefully made it more three-dimensional. Maybe the creator intended for it to look washed out. A95L raised that up and made it pop more. Well, the G4 has that solution now, in theory, and many who've seen it say, yes, it is easily a match, if not better than the A95L with that three-dimensional pop. We'll see, and it looks like people are betting on the G4 to do just that because the G3 did not do that last year. Its processing did not make it pop artificially. A95L has XR clear, which you cannot turn off, and it did make specular highlights brighter, and I think that's what you're seeing, Seek. What do you think? Should Seek so, wait for the G4? So, Colors pop. I see. Seek, this is, we're joking about it, but this is the exact story as last year where the A95K, I said this earlier in the stream, the A95K um, came out, it was blah, 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 great. And then the G2 came out, or I'm sorry, the G3 came out. We're in the same boat now where the G4, much like the G2, three, three surpasses the king because the king is just a little bit older, uh -huh. which means Sony is not gonna just hang out. So right, their right. A95L um, replacement, it might not be this year, but it's still gonna be probably middle of next year. So yeah, for the minute LG caught up, took a step past, it might just be half a step seek, and then you're gonna see Sony come back. So everything we're talking about is very temporary. But I would say right now, from what I can see, the G4 has just jumped ahead. It has yes. with both brightness and processing, and more importantly, FOMO, it's flexibility of image. And to bring up what we've talked about, it's Dolby Vision implementation. Mm -hmm. They have now a Dolby Vision um, filmmaker mode. Being at their event, FOMO, and actually speaking with Dolby Vision themselves, their relationship goes so far back. They do make it a priority to work in tandem the way that their Dolby Vision is led. And having them there really put to bed the discussion you and I had just three weeks ago thinking Dolby Vision was dead. Yes. So LG now having a filmmaker mode in Dolby Vision, what they were trying to say to me, FOMO, was saying that if we're talking about director's intent and this is what we want, why is filmmaker mode over here? And then when Dolby Vision comes on, everyone goes, oh, man, where's my filmmaker mode? Mm -hmm. It confused people. So now you're going to have your vivid, your standard, then your filmmaker, and then you have your other presets, then your filmmaker. Where, say, with Sony, it's your dark, your bright. They're going to have a dedicated filmmaker mode, again, with some of that flexibility as well. That tone right. mapping probably won't be there, um, professional, but it's just another thing. These are the little additions that set these TVs apart when you really want to buy. These little tiny things. XR Clear was that little thing that you're like, wait a minute, that is a difference, FOMO. That is the difference. And that's what the G4 sets apart from the G3 that's getting lost in, hey, they look the same. There's so much more to them than that. I'd, I'd like to address what you just said about film about Dolby Vision, where you have a dark and a bright, which makes no sense to me. Why is dark accurate? Why not call it Dolby Vision accurate? Or in this case, Dolby Vision Filmmaker Mode. They should never yeah. have had the word Dolby Vision Dark, because dark to me is a bad thing. Bright to me is a good thing, right? And I mean, you want point, things to be brighter. And to your point, I'm watching Oppenheimer the other day in a bright room on the A80L, and I was watching it in Dolby Vision Bright, and it was very bright. I put it in dark, and it was definitely more pleasing, but the word dark really screwed with my mind. The word dark is terrible, <laughs> right? So I really wish they would change that a little bit. And but, I, think, um, I think Sony took it literally. They did make their Dolby Vision dark. That's the other irony, right? Yeah. Or, or if you have the A95L, the vision dark is too bright, which confuses us. We have 578 in the chat. What? Hey, guys, what? take a second to click like. I'll wait. Yeah, Thank you so much love, for guys. clicking like. Thank you. We're here for you. Like, Matt give Pistol. Us some love. Also, Robert, Mr. Yes. Robert Zone is in the chat. Robert, Robert. thank you for pre-ordering the G4. He has some good deals for you guys for pre-order. Um, coming from us, there's some definite added benefits. Hit Robert up. Um, yes. I'm very yeah, close so let's, to let's say real myself. quick, if you buy, uh, let me jump in here and add. So I get my TVs either from Robert Zone or if I need it right away, I run to Best Buy if they have it before anyone else. Otherwise, if they, I get it, it legally, they take it out. <laughs> when the TV is illegally leaked, 
I go to Best Buy and get it, right? <laughs> but otherwise, when it's legal, I get it from Robert or the TV manufacturer sent it to me, right? So it's one of those three because Robert does step up when it comes to customer service. And I have to take a, uh, take a second to say that he's the only one giving you the best deal right now on the G4 launch. So if you guys want to pay for launch prices, Robert, you're going to get 10% store credit with Robert, which means you can apply it for an extended warranty or apply it towards calibration because he does offer calibration. It takes a little bit longer because you're going to get it calibrated, but you can apply your store credit to that or to any of his many LG, Samsung, Sony sound systems, right? You could buy a whole sound system, apply a 10% store credit, and most importantly... If you're outside the state of New York, he's going to handle the sales tax. That is on a $6,500 TV. What does that come up to? So something, guys, for you guys to think about. But thank you, Robert, for showing up. And, yeah, we will talk soon. I cannot wait to get my G4 because someone asked whether we're going to review the 83-inch G4, Brian. And I spoke to Classy. He says he'll be getting an 83-inch G4 for review. How about you, Brian? Will you be getting an 83-inch G4 for review? Well, is he replacing? getting one for review or is he buying himself one? That's a very different thing. Ah, well, we don't know. So he, he said he'll I, keep I'm it not, if he likes I won't, it that I will, much. Not, I will not. I would not do that to one of our guys in the chat to take a, t a G3 that they're trying to buy from Robert. I would definitely review one in the store. Um, I would wait to see if I would buy one from Robert, but that wouldn't be for a review. That would be to buy it for my buy personal. Because you love it so much. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just because for, that's why I try to shoot things at Robert's store because when, especially the A95L, Robert offered me to type, take that TV home and review it. The fact of the matter is some of you guys are trying to buy that TV. Yeah, so true. I really don't want. Well, there was a shortage hurting. of the seven seven eight five L, and there was yeah, so all the gone. So hard inch, to get. Yeah, and the allocation for the eighty three inch G four is going to be very limited, very slim. Mm -hmm. And I know how that works. So with Robert, it'll be more about the first thing I'll do is show that TV, and then maybe at the end of the year, if I really like it, which I think I will, I'll purchase it. But I won't take that from him now because I'll be taking it from one of you guys, and you guys Absolutely. need it. And, and Robert's for, places, we can, I'll show you the 77, but I mean, this right. year, Robert, this year, Robert, I'm going to tell you right in front of everybody, let's get a B4 in there. I want to see a, a B4, B4 this year. Yeah, how B4. good is a B4 this year? Yeah. How good is a B4? I want to see it. Let's, let's, get, let's get a small one of those. And then definitely last year I was very lazy with the C3. I shot a quick comparison. I'll, I'll bring you C4 footage this year because Robert's got them there. Um, I'll be there more often than than I was before. And I'll shoot you the C4. We're definitely going to do the Z3 when um, he gets it. So we're going to be coming at you from all angles. I just shot the Sharp FS1 at Robert's store, which got pushed to the back because I ended up with this LG Access. So look for that. The Sharp FS1 is there right now. Great TV. We're not letting anything slim, sweep, uh, slip by this year. Speaking of your LG Access, uh, Ephraim would like you to reach out to them and confirm whether the Ethernet port is capped because consistently, and it's not just LG, Sony, LG, many makers, their Ethernet port is actually slower than their USB and Wi-Fi ports. So for many people, the workaround is use the higher bandwidth USB, get a adapter, Ethernet to USB adapter, and use that if your TV allows you to do that, and or use Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is consistently faster than their Ethernet port on many TVs, including Sony. So that's kind of ironic. But yeah, now we'll uh, if we remember, we'll ask LG whether their Ethernet port is capped. Thank you for that super yep. chat. Do you you don't know Absolutely. off the top of your head, right? Whether it's capped? No. Nah, it's not something mm -hmm. we ask. Until you ask us. Big C dub, thank you for that super chat. Do you believe smaller pixel density panels like the 55 inch A95L versus the A95L77 looks significantly better than the larger panels? So you have to take us, you have to look at it this way. How close are you sitting to your TV? So higher pixel density technically is better if you're sitting closer, but if you're sitting seven feet away, the 55 inch is now too small. So you're squinting. Technically, picture density is probably a little bit better at the 55 inch, but you're sitting seven feet away. You want the larger TV. So it's always a matter of immersion versus the clarity from pixel density. If you're at a computer, you're three and a half to four feet away, yeah, get a 42 inch OLED. You're not gonna get an 83 inch OLED, right? Now the pixel density is terrible. It'll look very soft. So 
as long as you're watching a TV from 50 to 60 degrees away, get the TV size that matches that, it'll look fine. Because 60 degrees away from a 55 inch or a 77 inch will look very similar. Maybe the 55 inch slightly sharper because you are physically closer to the 55 inch and your eye, your acuity is able to see it better. So if you are four and a half to five feet away, you get the 55 inch. But if you're eight feet or more, you gotta go with the 77 inch. The 55 inch is not watchable. So yeah, let us know how far you sit from your TV because really you wanna look at viewing angle to determine the size. So watch my viewing angle video, which we explain exactly what you need to do. Well, Big C Dub has a lot of TVs himself. He knows he does know his stuff. But I will tell you that without a doubt, Big C Dub, you know, when you see a smaller TV, um, even of lower quality, that pixel density does make it look so clean, which is why monitors always look phenomenal. Um, other than the color disappearing on the IPS monitor, whenever you watch a PC game running at 1080p on a monitor, you're like, wow, that's so clean. That's why a lot of times we don't recommend jumping from, you know, a 55 to a 100 inch. Um, even that guy before who was going from a C1, oh, was going from a C1 to a G4, only because the G4 is of such high quality and that processing is on point would I say make that jump. But if he was going from a C1, this is important, FOMO, if he was going from a C1 with that dynamic, with that contrast to a large, cheap mini LED, I could never recommend him going. It has to be one of good quality. So that pixel yep. density does really play a point. And to your point, I think if you get a smaller one, the problem is, FOMO, unless it's on your desk, the minute you sit back, that pixel density means nothing because you're too far away to really appreciate it. Like, like you're saying. But yes, without a doubt, they're definitely cleaner, which is why 8K supposedly is cleaner. And Robert, so if you're still here, if you're, if you're still here, Robert, you got people willing to buy right now, as long as you can answer this question. Yes. Value Electronics, any way you can do 48 month, no interest financing, and uh, still limited to uh, one year. That's so a windy question, by the, the way. Deals. That's not a Robert question. <laughs> <laughs> it's Robert's so wind, do lovely, not, do, lovely wife Wendy. Do and your not underwriter. get this man in trouble. <laughs> no, Robert's going to gonna say yes. That. He's going to say yes, and Wendy's going to be like FOMO. You understand that after he said yes, I got fifty phone calls <laughs> to break the news the to them. Of free. <laughs> yeah, dude. Right, you guys. You guys all know Robert, and Robert's the man. And you know, he wants he you was, to have a TV. He does, and it's, it's funny. I got. I'll share this with you. When I'm there filming, and Robert gets on the phone. He just, he wants you to have the best experience you can have. And if you come in with whatever budget, he's got an answer for whatever you need. But he is so into this. I joke with everybody that we meet. If you listen to FOMO and I talk off camera, we talk like this. If you hear me, yes. Robert, talk off camera, it's like this. We This is all we discuss. How's the family? They're great. How are you? Great. So anyway, check out this G4. <laughs> it's really... Maybe it's a little pathetic, but we're so passionate about this. Robert is that times a million. So whenever I see Robert, I actually spend more time chatting with him about that. So give him a call, hit him up. I mean, he's he's the man. You know, it, it looks like Matt Pistol's treating this like buying a house. 72 months financing. I don't know if your, t your TV's going to last What's that long. Up? Make sure you get a warranty that goes 72 months, right? I'm honest, so you're so, so you get a lot of interest here, Robert. <laughs> Oh, wait, I, I think, I, I believe Robert has responded. You know, Wendy, his lovely wife, has knocked him on the shoulder and said, we Everything offer okay. one year interest-free financing, which, by the way, interest-free, I'm all about it. But if the customer wants to apply to our exclusive 10% store mm -hmm. credit, we can go with 24 months interest-free financing. Yeah, nobody knows where I am. Ah. <laughs> You're getting a call from the, the red phone, Brian. That's all right. No, I'm just traveling. <laughs> no, it's like Br Brian's getting in trouble. Hey, mute yourself before you get before someone removes you physically. Oh, dude, I can't wait. Yeah, no. Okay, I don't know where I am. So I'm just traveling. So let's get to the next super chat here. Oh, wait, let's get to some of your, your comments here. One second. And, all right. Okay. Uh, we'll wait for Brian to get on eventually. Uh, let's check out some of your questions. Here's a great chance to ask questions, everyone. <laughs> yes, Crackfu, that was Robert's wife, uh, telling Brian to stop offering 
low financing. <laughs> All right, how's everyone doing? Okay, what excites you most this year? Which TVs? I know this is right now an LG G4 Love Fest, and I have to take a step back and congratulate LG for doing something that we had hoped they would do, which is play the software processing game. It's so important. No one else is doing that. They're, they're brute forcing with hardware updates, and I know TCL and Hisense, that's a cheaper way to go for them, is just to keep on upgrading their hardware, ironically, right? It's cheaper to do that for TCL and Hisense. The reality is, to do software right takes a long time, it takes a lot of expertise. You have to be in the business for quite a while. And what LG has done, frankly, has surprised me. So those of you who are excited about LG this year, specifically the G4, yes. The question is the C4, the, the $1,000 cheaper version of LG's W OLED in 2024, does it get any improvements? And that's something we're going to have to look into. And I agree with Capono. If you have to finance, maybe you shouldn't be buying a TV. Or rather, if you can't pay off your credit card in two months, maybe you shouldn't be buying a TV, right? But again, if they're offering, like sometimes Best Buy does, 12 months of financing, and hey, you know, why not? Pay later, all that good stuff. But generally speaking, a TV is not a car or a house. Uh, get what you can. And the great thing is a $1,000 TV is so good today that don't buy the $3,000 TV just to see us talk about a better TV next year. It's going to beat you up. So how many of you are planning to get the LG G4, actually? That's a great question for you all. Okay. Second 84 says, 83-inch G4 or new 85-inch QN900. All streaming content, YouTube, fully that controlled room, nine feet away. Definitely the 83-inch G4 will be the better TV image quality overall than the 85-inch QN900, and I'll tell you why. Because of your content, streaming content over YouTube, the G4 is going to have some pretty brilliant upscaling of low bitrate content. Now, the Q900 also has updated its processor. We're going to have a head-to-head, -head, so don't buy it yet. My instincts tell me that 83-inch G4 will be better, but we're going to have a head-to-head -head between the G4 and the Q900 in a few weeks at Value Electronics, so we could hopefully answer definitively which has the better image processor for streaming content on YouTube in a fully light-controlled room. But the fact that it's fully light-controlled, I would say that the G4, I'm leaning towards the G4, honestly. And from 9 feet away, that's a good size. I think you'll be okay, but we'll see. So don't forget to catch. We hope to have that happening near the end of April. Oh, wait. Brian is back. Let me unmute him. Yo, was that Wendy calling you to yell at you? Good. I was like, yo. Well, because we, we heard everything you said. I had to now, now the rumor the rumor is I got divorced because I was in an apartment. Now I'm really in trouble because I'm in a hotel. Well, because you you have a remote love nest in Beverly I'm Hills. I'm losing everything. My You're TV game's everything. going smaller. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? I Apologies. love it. Is Neo QLED good for gaming movies and sports? Generally speaking, Neo QLED is probably the best LCD TV for what you said, gaming, movies, and sports, right? Better than the competition, that's why it's more expensive. But is it better than OLED? For all of that, generally, no. I mean, in, no. in here and there it might be better, but overall, the G4 with MLA or the Sony QD OLED, they will be better, or even its own, Samsung's own S95C slash D will be better for gaming, movies, and sports. But the, Q, the Neo QLED though, can get a little bit brighter and it's a little bit cheaper, hopefully. So by the end of the year, for example, right now, the 85-inch Neo QLED QN90C can be had for under $2,000 at Samsung.com if you're an offer member. Under $2,000 for an 85-inch flagship TV. That's crazy, right? You're not going to get that on an 85, 83-inch OLED anywhere. So it is a good value, but it's not the best. All right, and we have a super chat from Jordan B. from SK. Where is SK, my friend? FOMO and Brian, first, thanks for all you do. Well, you're welcome, and thank you for watching, including responding to our comments. Can you tell us what you're losing when you're going from the A95L, or when you're going with the A95L instead of the G3? Motion, flicker, what are you losing going with A95L instead of the G3? You're losing brightness. The G3 is a brighter TV, generally speaking, in all content. Now, the A95L will give you brighter color luminance in specific scenes in certain HDR content, but if you need just brighter for sports, hockey, for example, right, where the, the white, 
the white ice tends to cause the A95L to dim, or even college football. I did a comparison comparing sports on A95L against the G3. G3 preserved that brightness in standard mode better than the Sony in standard mode. And in Vivid, for sure, the G3 is better in its brightest setting. Motion on the two TVs are very similar, so I wouldn't choose one over the other just based on motion alone. Now, the flicker is a different issue. So the A95L's sharpness may have some flicker with slow, fine detail moving across the screen, maybe. Uh, that may have to do with Sony's processing of the sharpness, but unless you have that specific content. Um, I like the A95L a lot. I have it here, I have the A95K. I like that I can get that color luminance for most of what I watch, and I like Sony's color selection out of the box. I find that the G3 feels, it feels, the color feels toned down. The XR Clear is why I got the A95L, and it's a great reason to get the A95L for me. For my content, it works great. Now, the G4, on the other hand, but Brian, what do you think Jordan would be losing if you went with the A95L instead of the G3 besides brightness? I mean, not much. I think the A95L was a clear step up. I'm like 1080, what am I, 720? right now for oh, did, did you lose your internet yeah you're uh <laughs> someone someone came in and stuck it to you dropped your internet. Back, so i don't think you lose anything other than that brightness same thing if almost said i mean I don't, I don't think you lose anything the a95l what's so funny about these conversations is right away the a95l is the crap tv which is not <laughs> we've never said no. that the a95l is a i thought TV. it was off the charts and still think it is and even though i have the a80l i definitely thought the A95L was leagues above it. And so I still think you, you know, again, it's the processing, it's XR clear. The gaming on the A95L is also very good. So, and they have the game bar and they, they also have a few different presets for gaming as well. They don't just have the one or two, they have a couple. So I think the A95L is, you know, I would just say the problem with buying the G3 over the A95L FOMO is the G4 exists. Yeah. So the A95L gets you closer to the G4 or right there with it. So the A95L is, the, is what sounds ridiculous. It's the affordable G4. If that, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me. If you get the G3, Hopefully you're that getting helps the you, clear, If you're getting the G3, you're getting the clear third out of that group. If that makes sense. And Value Electronics Robert wants you to know that LG's first allocation shipment is beginning to arrive at his store the end of this week, no later than next week, supply is very limited. And we're probably talking about the 83 inch for sure. But overall supply is very limited and the next production is one month away. So if you want to be the first on your block to get a G4 and you want to be guaranteed that allocation, definitely let Robert know and he'll reserve you that 83 inch G4, which I think is going to be a huge hit because of both the processor update and the MLA. Thank you, Mikey, for the super chat. What should I get? A 75-inch Hisense U7K or the TCL QM865 inch coming from a Samsung TU7000. Watch lots of 4K. So the reason I laugh is you win no matter what because it's such a great upgrade. <laughs> I wish I was you. You, you got to go with a 75-inch U7K. You got to go larger. I, I really think that... First of all, the U7K image quality will be better than the TU7000. More importantly, you're getting 75 inches. And then your next upgrade, you could stay the same size and get a better quality or continue to go larger. So go with the 75 inch U7K. I believe it's gonna be an upgrade over your TU7000, especially for what you're doing. 4K HDR streaming apps, Netflix. The U7K definitely has the pop for 4K HDR streaming and Netflix works fine. Yeah, thank you for that. And, and of course, just Netflix. If you're watching internal apps on the Hisense and you find Netflix Dolby Vision to be an issue, use an external streamer. So that's my, the only thing is that the, use, the Hisense, depending on what it looks like, watch your Netflix, see if Dolby Vision looks fine. If it looks fine to you, great. If it looks either washed out or too lifted, bright, then you might want to go with a QM865 inch if that bothers you. Or to solve it, use an external streamer like Fire Stick, Google TV Stick, or Google Chromecast, or much to my dismay, Roku, so I don't recommend it, but go ahead <laughs> if you're willing to deal with, with how they treat people. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be heavy on Roku with all this year until they do something to win me back. All right, so... 
Oh, Dr. Hal, I feel for you, man. His 50-inch plasma just died. You got to go with an OLED. You can't, can't go to LCD TV. Rest in peace. Love, I still love plasma. Oh, wait, Alexander, we, we talk, go ahead. Didn't, uh -huh. we, didn't we talk about, I don't, this might not be common knowledge, but uh, Greg told me from LG that plasma, the reason why they couldn't go 4K was the pixels would fire too close to each other. It wasn't that they couldn't get larger; mm. they were too large. Yeah. So they had. So if you guys, I, I didn't realize this that plasma had over a hundred inch sizes, mm -hmm. but as they went to smaller sizes, being seventy five, even sixty five, four K, the pixels would literally create light. They would charge each other, so they knew that they were done. I always thought it was the opposite from where they couldn't get larger than sixty five. They actually could go over a hundred. They just couldn't get that middle size, which is interesting as to why plasma kind of went out. And before we go any further, I want to give a last call out for questions because I have to pack and head over and hang out with Brian for a few days. So uh, we cannot wait to share Start some rumors. With you. Come on over, sweetheart. Uh, yes, we're, we're going to have to to put put away those rumors for now. Separate but rooms. <laughs> or shack it up. <laughs> Fred, or shack it up. Oh, I love you guys. You're all so... Well, actually, I mean, this community is so small, but... What? At CES, we actually are going to shack up. Oh, yeah. At CES, we, we will is, be All we do up. is freaking edit. Like, edit like, are you guys going to hang video, out and drink? Man. I'm like, drink what? We're drinking water and edit. I was editing my videos on the plane. You know what? I will tell you guys this. When the people that are watching me on the plane, I'm on a 14-inch tablet. All they see is me editing my face. <laughs> What's the like, What the hell is this guy doing on this plane? Hey, Jimmy, Jay, Jamie Rollo has a question for you, but I'll get to that quickly. Alexander, Jamie Rolo. stop Fine. the FOMO. In what year do you think 24P study will be resolved? Uh, it's going to have to be software based. So similar to what LG is doing, but it will not be resolved to your satisfaction this year. It'll still look like soap opera if you get rid of the stutter. The question is, can we give it natural cinema motion without soap opera? I don't know. Uh, it may have to be true cut where the metadata is on the content where you eliminate stutter without introducing soap opera. And that is the challenge. So I don't see it happening this year, maybe in two years. I have to talk to the true cut team to see how close they are in introducing that to Netflix because it needs to be on the source. The metadata has to be on the source, very similar to HDR metadata that's at the source. You got to give it true cut metadata. Then the TV will get it right. So like right now with LG's solution, it do, it gets rid of stutter, but it introduces slight soap opera. We yeah. wanted to have no stutter, no soap opera, natural cinema motion. Can that happen? And well, not this year, my friends, not this year. So Jamie so funny, has this great, go ahead, go ahead. Also, what's so funny about that is we talk about this in gaming that we hate motion blur, but it does work. And then you sit there and go, how do my eyes actually work? I do have a little motion blur. <laughs> I do have a little motion <laughs> depilation. So it's funny what we're asking for. But if you watch old movies and you're watching like a, a panning shot, oh man, yep. is that the natural? So it's very interesting to, to be like, it I, is. I do have some motion blur. Uh, Brian, do uh, you remember saying whether the 83 inch G4 will be out until, won't be out until May? Do you remember the the release date of the G four eighty three inch? Well, uh, well, Robert's here. Robert should be able to tell you. Yeah, if Robert's in the chat, he'll tell you. Typically, yeah. the eighty four will be or the eighty three will be later. It uh, won't be out till May on this G four video. Um, you said it. No, yeah, typically it'll be later. So yeah, Robert, if you have some confirmation when the eighty three yeah. inch G four will be out, please let us know, Robert. And let's see. Broken Wrench, no. No 83-inch, 85-inch QD OLEDs this year. Would you recommend a non-OLED LG TV? So, Benjamin, great question. This may be the first year I recommend two non-OLED TVs from LG. First, the 89T 98-inch TV. Now, I don't want to recommend it yes, yet. I just know that it is very compelling to me because it has better dimming software, precision dimming. I need to see it, though, compared to the competition. And then the second one that Brian was just so impressed with is the QNED 90T. 
possibly depending on the price because the QNED 90T is priced to go against the best from Hisense, the best from TCL, and yeah. the best from Samsung at that price, right? Just under 2,000, 65 inch size. And Sony, oh my gosh, Sony has the XR70 at that price. So yeah, who, to who it's going to be a close one. We, who thought, we, we literally thought that mini LEDs are going to be relegated to the cheap. And you're like, actually, no, we're going to, we're going to, Sony's like, no, actually, it's going to be our main focus. You're like, really? But Pongo, really? to your point, I think, I think with QNED, only clarification on this, the 90, the one, the video that I'm on, does have all full HDMI 2.1 versus the two. That's going to be a step up from the QMA and Hisense. Having their own SOC, they can do that. And they also have another motion setting. It's like a clear black frame insertion, which is really impressive. That's going to be on the QNA. There are separate things that they're adding. So I'm glad to see that the precision dimming is there. We thought that the um, QDO that was, or I'm sorry, the QNED was a missed opportunity two years ago. Last year, it was a nothing, and I think now it's going to be pretty interesting, especially with that large size FOMA. And thank you so much, Robert, for stepping in and answering that question. He's oh, wow. expecting 83-inch G4 to be included in his first allocation no later than early next week. So basically, by busy. the end of the month, <laughs> by the end of the month, he'll get it, and he can get it sent to you, my friends. So that well, is well, awesome. And I'm telling you guys that this is how I'm already texting Robert on the side. Even though I'm going to be there with FOMO, when those TVs launch, I will be there on a Sunday and I will get that, that footage to you to show you the 83, show you the differences in sizes um, and then get some gaming going on it and see how you got, we're not going to just do one quick, like all, all my video was this first look. We're going to keep hitting this and we're going to really cover them throughout the year. So you'll see all the different sizes. Robert's already confirmed. He's going to order a 65 inch before so we can show it. Um, I know he's going to have the C series. So Robert, He's right, he's right here doing it. So I'll be there right on here. Sunday, Robert. Get some pizza. I haven't and had pizza in a minute, but... The O has a great follow-up <laughs> question. Thank you for the super chat. Uh oh, o, how big realistically is that jump from a 77 to an A3 immersion-wise? So, Brian, you've been 16%. dealing with this. 16%. Is it noticeable? Is it worthwhile? Massive. Okay. 16%. It's not, and... well, it's not... I will tell you this. People will say... How can I say this nicely? People will say it's not. But listen to people that have them and buy them. When you walk into Robert's store, for instance, there is 98-inch TVs, there's 97-inch. You can easily pick out which one is a 85, an 83, and a 77. I will tell you that in his store, 77 is the smallest size he has. He's buying that 64, so we, I can show you guys. But... The 77 looks like a 65 now. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Now, also, 75 to 77 looks different. Simply because 75-inch Neo QLEDs have a bigger bezel. They look more square. The 77 looks more streamlined. So there are big jumps, guys. 77 to 83 is an epic difference. I mean, definitely the immersion. I would never... You guys heard me say the A ninety five dollars is the best TV in the world, and I never for a second really considered getting it. I went yeah. and got an eighty three A eighty L. I bought that TV, so the proof is in the pudding, guys. That immersion is no joke. FOMO <laughs> now is now jump. Who's in the pudding? I thought you said the What's poop is in the like pudding. A soup? The poop is in the pudding. <laughs> now you got FOMO going from sixty by sixty. People literally ask us specific questions, right? FOMO, what do you think? I'm gonna go S ninety five. A95, 55 inches. You're like, what I have here is 120. <laughs> right well, you know now, what's funny is, last year people asked me, hey, Fomo, you're planning to review that 98 inch or 100 inch? I go, no, no, they're too big. And then, now so that it's a thing, me. I have to review this year. So yes, I will be reviewing 98 and 100 inch TVs just because I didn't realize it would be a thing so quickly. Uh, so yes, now here's a great comment i want to address and uh just making last calls for questions my friends because we we got to run shortly but definitely we <laughs> we're gonna have such a good year this year someone had a great comment about the lg being too expensive who's gonna buy it they're not gonna sell any of it and my response to that has to be that all the flagship TVs cost the same, whether it's the Samsung S95D, Sony A95L at launch, or whatever the Mini LED flagship ends up being this year, my friends, it's going to be all expensive and similarly priced. So here we go, Ahmad Z. 
We're inflation. Those high overpriced TVs from LG are not going to sell. Flagship TVs, they're all overpriced. Number two, even the C4 that appears expensive, Sony's OLED for this year will be more expensive than the C4 at the same tier. And Sony's LCD TVs are not necessarily less expensive either. So when you're talking flagship, if you've noticed, the prices are very similar. The only TV brands that have the performance of a flagship for half the price is Hisense and TCL, but they have their own issues, right? They have the brightness, they have the black levels, they have the contrast, but then they don't have the nuanced software processing motion button down. So there's always a compromise when you take price down a notch, you get the obvious, the brightness, the specular highlights, but you're going to lose this and that, whether it's gaming or whatnot. So um, to be fair, it's not just LG. All OLED TVs coming out this year are not going to be cheap, and that's what I've been complaining about. If they want to sell more OLEDs, they got to drop the prices across the board. LG, Samsung, Sony, Philips, Panasonic, for those of you outside the USA. But it's an issue because OLEDs are not cheap to make. So I feel you, Ahmad, and this is why I love Hisense and TCL for the pricing that they put out for the quality of their TVs. So, yep, you, know, you don't have to buy well, OLED. And that, well, and that said, too, Formo, we always want to be sensitive, guys, especially as I'm pixelated like Atari. We want to be sensitive to value, always. Mm -hmm. We always want to always. be sensitive to say, look, you know, what you can afford is what you can afford. You have to keep in mind, guys, these are very high-end electronics. A GPU is $2,500. Your phone is $1,400. So, yes, I appreciate that the prices have come down. But, guys, I mean, $4,000 was a bargain in 2016. We have to put things back in perspective. There is plenty of options at a lower price point for somebody who is on a budget because of inflation. But to push that too hard, there are people that want to spend that money, not because they have the money, but they want to allocate what's important to them. Maybe they skip a vacation and get the best TV money can buy because that's their thing. So it yep. has to be available to them. So I appreciate what you're saying. And LG, Samsung, Sony, they all have other offerings. But to want them all to cost nothing, these companies will disappear in a year. Mm -hmm. They already don't make money on TVs, guys. They don't. I hate to tell you, the margins are nothing. They're not great. They Sony make more makes money, money the, off their the, rest. Yeah, yeah. Sony makes money off their reference monitors. Samsung makes money off their phones. Panasonic is out of this industry in some way, so they make money off of equipment, right? LG makes yep. money off dishwashers. Yeah. So if you want to keep getting to drive the prices down, there will be no TVs. Or and rather... they have the pressure from... But they also have formal. They have the pressure from Hisense and TCL yes. undercutting them, doing now OLEDs. They're, they're, they're literally... So you have not to say you have to give the companies a break. I understand the thought of, hey, who cares? These companies are massive. Everyone has jobs. They need to be profitable. But if we want this enthusiast line, we have to have, I want enthusiast TVs, guys. I don't want a bunch of cheap TVs. <laughs> right. As you get, as you rent harder and harder, your face starts to pixelate. <laughs> He's getting too excited for the stream. Uh, Brad, I, I want to address this. This is a great point. Uh, I spoke to Greg Lowen, who works closely with uh, Motion Picture Studios, and he his team calibrates a lot of their TVs and monitors. And he told me one of the reasons why 3D died and besides the discomfort of the glasses and so forth, was that 3D added a layer, added so many processing and layers that by the time you got it to your eyes, it was too dim. And so TVs back then were not bright enough, specifically OLED TVs. Now that OLEDs are hitting 3,000 and next year possibly 4,000, they might bring back 3D. They might, they might not, but at least the reasons for getting rid of it is now gone. The OLED TVs were simply not bright enough way back when. And you guys remember how dim they were, right? Yeah. So now could be a time to introduce it, considering that Sony is behind pushing the 3D <laughs> content <laughs> all over again. So, but I, I love guess? this. Go ahead. <laughs> Let me guess, you want to introduce it for free. <laughs> free glasses for everyone. Do you remember now, that the is... passive glasses were like 120 bucks each? They were not Once cheap. Those, all those glasses. Yeah. Right? So it's like... Yeah, it's so, Quack Fu... Projectors uh, here's, are awesome 3D. Here's an enthusiast, right? Quack Fu's been around forever, and he's got himself so nice Fu? TVs. 
And right now, he's wondering if you should cancel the 77-inch S90C for the 83-inch G4. Brian, your thoughts yes. on this longtime yes. listener? Yes. yes, I agree. Absolutely. That's a, Quack come on, Quack Quack you, you got a bunch of great TVs. Just wait. Wait until Black Friday. Quack Call Quack. Robert. Quack. Right. See if he can do something special for you with a G4 on Black Friday. Come on. This Quack is going to be an amazing TV. That, that question, Quack Fu, that, that was a softball. You put that up there for me to knock it out. I mean, that's not even saying, you're not even going from a QD OLED. If you were saying a 77-inch S95B versus an 83-inch A80L or C4, come on, man. G, he, he means the G4? Come on. The G4 beats everything right now. 83, there's nothing in its way. I mean, there's nothing. Wait, wait, wait. In its we way. officially don't know anything about Sony TVs. I haven't, other than the the secret viewing of their prototype, Brian, for all we know, Sony could be introducing XR Clear 2. And I'm not saying I know anything you don't, but <laughs> that would should we, I mean, okay, guys, <laughs> vote, right? Put it to a vote. Do you guys think that Sony, you know, I don't know, maybe they have something special, Brian? What do you think? That would be, that's what that's what I love about the fact that we're not media, right? There's no article to take down. Um, what's going to be great is if they end up breaking down and saying, "By the way, we have that's what we want. I want that, right?" So let's go back so we don't take these videos down because we made a wrong call. I would love to see that, um, but you know, we'll see. And Anthony, the answer is yes. The G4 will be available for 5,500 this year. You're at launch, right? Yes, at launch is over 6,000. Trust me when I say by the holidays, Brian, it'll be closer to 5,500, more likely than not, less than yeah. 5,500. So hold on, Anthony. Yeah. I know you want it. Just hold on until the holidays, and you're going to get yourself an 83-inch G4. Well, and, oh. and guys, I mean, again, going back into my little rant about the pricing, there is a certain nuance to wait, wait, being first. Wait, your rant. Yes, Brian but... says, open your wallet. <laughs> Here's my thing. So we talk about this during Black Friday. Would you rather have the TV? Now, this is, again, to your personal finance. Yes. You want to save $300 always. and get the TV three months later? Is that worth $100 a month to you to have that kind of enjoyment? To me, I'd rather have it a little bit earlier. But I'm not spending your money for you. But if you're somebody who wants to have the cutting edge right now, you buy when it releases. If you want that, that's what you, I'll always say wait. But if you want that cutting edge right now, buy buy it when it comes out. Because you get those few extra, you know, and if you buy within your return window, they'll still honor the price if it drops massively in a month or so. So it's really, I can't criticize you if you want it right now. You want to yeah. wait? It depends on how much, like our buddy Cosmo, who was in there earlier, has... 140 inch unibody. He doesn't care. He's taking the helicopter to the store. Can he bomb himself in the way? You know what? For, for all we know, Cosmo's living out of a trailer park that's just big <laughs> enough, just barely <laughs> big enough to fit his micro my... LED, right? <laughs> we but are not going to judge though, your value decisions. There was sure. a great, if you guys look up on YouTube, there's a great, um, for audio files that are into vinyl FOMO. There's some yeah. guys in Japan that have you know a couple hundred thousand dollar systems, but their entire apartment is these amazing systems. That's their thing. They might drive a crappy car, but they have their thing. So I'll never criticize you for wanting to have your thing. You're just gonna have to pay for it if you want it right now. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you wanna hang back and get value, the best thing about hanging back FOMO is you get the reviews, you get everybody going through it and you get the price. But if you want your TV now, especially if you don't have one, you'll get all the time to enjoy your TV in the time that you're, you're hanging out. Having no TV for three months is no fun. Nope. I'm on Definitely. fire tonight. Today, you are. Because it's Pull only 530 now. Pull out that wallet, says Brian. Brian's, Brian's saying, you know what? If your wife's not looking, buy it. And then hope for the best. Ken Deal has a great question. When do you think mini TVs will be as good as OLED TVs? So Ken Deal. So here's the great this part. Year. Right now, it is as good, but it's always depending on your contents. Who has used this example? If you're watching SDR, you're watching over the air on your antenna, right? You're watching Friends, you're watching Third Rock, you're watching the news, they look the same. Now, if you're critically watching movies where 
the room is light controlled, it's dark. You look at the shadow detail, you're looking at the infinite, you see the infinite contrast, right? Then OLEDs will always be better than mini LED TV because in a critical viewing environment, that infinite contrast is very obvious. In a bright room, you have distractions like glare, not as not as important, but not as visible. And so you're we're already there depending on your content can deal. So if you are an enthusiast like myself, like Brian, where you're a critical movie watcher, you're looking for all the details, you have a collection, whether it's Kaleidoscape or Blu-ray disc, and you want to see it all, all the we're scars. Looking close. <laughs> there you are. We're looking close. We got the we got the jewel glass. Huh? The flag. If that's the kind of TV guy you are, you got to get an old oh, light, or a cute old, right? So mini LED TVs, clearly mini LED, I believe we're already there, but that's because I believe most of you wouldn't notice the improvement either. I showed to my and she listens, so I'm going to have to say this carefully. I always bring my wife and hey, honey, what do you like better? She's all like, I like that TV. Doesn't matter what technology it is. She always ends up pointing to the Sony. Right, Sony X90L beats out my LG Samsung QD OLED or LG OLED Samsung QD OLED because she likes the way Sony looks and she figures it out every single time. So for her, it's the way the color on the Sony appears to her, right? She just likes the skin tones on it. And so ultimately she does notice the difference. They go, wait, what about the, you know, the OLED's infinite contrast? She goes, yeah, I see that, but I, I, I don't care. I like the way the Sony's look because she would sit there for five minutes watching the two through my splitter. And so at the end of the day, Candil, it's definitely a judgment for you. And I think we're there. For most people, I think you'd be happy with a really good Samsung or Sony mini LED or OLED, depending on your content. So it's, but for us reviewers, the shootout, we're very critical. We see all the differences. That's why we care, but it's a pitch black room for sure. All right, but wait, didn't you say you haven't eaten yet? Yeah, dude, it's been like 14 hours. Oh, wait, wait, before I leave, I have to say, Capono, to your comment, oh, no. I, I need to complain about my Q90R. So I have the Samsung Q90R. This was the original flagship TV that I bought when I started the channel back in 2019. I still have it. I watch it regularly, and I need to get rid of it because the tone mapping is a nightmare. I'm watching Netflix, and it's clipping like crazy, right? People walk up to the light. Their cheeks are clipping out. So the Q90R definitely is showing its age for me. Uh, I'm a critical watcher. I see the difference. He's 25 years old, baby. And I'm like, man. And I don't have a TV next to it. Normally, I say, look, unless there's a better TV next to it, you're not going to notice I notice it because the clipping point, and this is just Netflix, right? This is just Korean dramas on Netflix. They're not watching some highfalutin creator 4000 net HDR on Netflix. This is just basic Korean Chinese drama Netflix, and the 90R cannot tone map it correctly. So I can say to everyone who has the Q90R, if you upgrade to the Q85, QN85D, the QN90D, you will experience an upgrade. Definitely tone mapping has improved. Sony X90L. So the 90R, more often than not, looks great for sports, this and that. But skin tones, when I see faces and I see it clipping, can't do it. But what's crazy is, Brian, are you ready? Black levels still look amazing. So it's still got great contrast. It, it was definitely ahead of its time, but it's definitely showing its age right now. So That's because yeah. back in the day, they would just crush the shadow detail to death. They did. Like the Q8FN? Like, nah, you can see no blooming. I can't see anything else either. Z90. <laughs> like, hey, that'll be so. What the hell is that? <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, James Bray. My 50 up, inch Panasonic plasma has died. I got a 65 a inch A80. I know a lot of you know, perfect time for it to die. I got a 65 inch A80L. <laughs> Good TV, oh, but, I, but I should have got 83, like Brian. Would it be a mistake going 85 Q90C? at a great deal, or go 77 ADL. You cannot go back to uh, LCD TV once you've gone to OLED. You will notice the difference. You also cannot go to a Samsung once you have a Sony. You are used to Sony color, motion, skin tones. I'm assuming you haven't had it calibrated. The Sony modes have a different color science than the Samsung. Samsung's great. Filmmaker mode is fine, but the Sony will look a little bit different. And you have XR Clear that Samsung does not. 
you got to go with the AADL. I'm sorry. You got to stick with the same family. Brian, what do you think? 85 inch, well, a little I mean, large, but Samsung? Well, James, to, to put the reasons behind it is why we're going from OLED Panasonic or plasma to OLED is that you don't even know what blooming is yet or what faded colors or viewing angle. You're so used to plasma's picture. The, the, the Samsung will definitely give you that brightness and that vibrancy, but Samsung flattens out that black level to control blooming. So instead of blooming, you might see gray blacks and that's going to make you crazy because you're not going to know what it is. Where if it was even a Sony and it bloomed, you're not going to know what it is. So that's why the hype behind Black Bars from a couple of years ago, people couldn't stop talking about it because they were purple. Mm -hmm. Once you see that coming from a plasma, you're going to have a really hard time. You're not going to know what it is. And that brightness is not going to mean anything to you. I would go with an OLED, uh, a big enough jump in size, 65 or 77, plus 85, as we talked about before, that jump might be a little too much because you're giving up the micro contrast. It's going to be softer. And brighter, and it's going to blow. So I would say definitely not. Definitely. So I stay with and OLED, Stan. Agreed, agreed. And Stan has a great super chat. Thank you for your patience, my friend. Hey, guys, do you hear any news on NA5L update to fix Dolby Vision bugs? Yes. Sony has reached out to us and called Brian personally to say, Brian, tell FOMO, tell your viewers, we are working on it. We know the problem. Be patient. There's a lot of moving parts. So just give you guys a little bit behind the scenes. Anytime they're fixing processing to something like Dolby Vision, you're working with multiple suppliers and vendors. So they're working with their own processor. They have to work with MediaTek. They have to work with Google TV to a certain degree. And they have to work with Adobe Vision team. And you know, back and forth, hey, this is the problem. And you, you would think oh, a couple of emails, you should be done, right? No, <laughs> apparently it's it's a little bit harder than we thought, but they're on it, and this is their flagship, and they are very embarrassed that there are issues with Dolby Vision, so they are working on it, though. There is no ETA other than they're working on it, Brian. Right, Brian? They didn't give you an ETA, right? They didn't, but, but the conversation is more this way. You have to understand that it took a while to get to them. So, yes, while you have videos from other creators talking about it, Sony's not seeing that. Sony's actually moving on to their 2024 lineup. That's where they're most busy. So going back and updating something like the A95L is very expensive. It takes a lot of resources. They have to circle back. So now we're telling them about it. They're hearing about it. They're addressing it with Dolby. From what I understand, the hardest thing for Mope was replicating it. Mm. Because it's a, it's a few different random shows. Mm -hmm. They have to replicate it. If it doesn't replicate on the TVs they have in stock, they have to then go find it and replicate it. That's the worst part about the word intermittent is while we find it in the same two shows, is it worth going back and redoing it for everybody for that cost? They've said yes, because they were able to actually replicate it. Um, and now they have to decide you know, how to make it happen. But guys, if you know firmware updates in gaming, if you're not careful, you will break other things. It's not as simple as going in and tweaking something. It takes a ton of time. And you have to yeah. make sure you don't break anything else. So that's what they're doing. While, keep in mind, they're doing that while the rest of the squad is trying to launch their new TVs. So it's a really hard time for them to go back. They always support their old TVs, FOMO, because the 95 is basically new. But these companies' reforce resources are this way. Yeah. Really hard to do that, like now when they're looking at launching their new tv so i'm asking you to be patient because they've said they're on it um they're not going to leave that tv behind it's a current tv it's just not going to happen very quickly it, um yeah it takes a while and i don't notice it on the a80l um then again i don't watch those two or three shows so it's not a big deal to me but they're addressing yeah. it. what's up michigan I think we're going to see has... michigan at um at uh MA MA this year i hope so michigan i think uh, so Here's a great counterpoint to my comment that once you go OLED, you can't go back. And Brian, I say that often, but not always the case. Michigan says, FOMO, that comment about going from OLED and back. He's going OLED, back. He has been going back. I am back. going back. He's now, the question for back. you, Michigan, question is, how large <laughs> was your A90J and how large is your new LCD LED TV? If you're going bigger, 
that may not matter so much. You know, infinite contrast, but you need to be, or you need brighter. But definitely, Michigan, tell us what was the improvement going back to the mini LED or LCD mini LED. What model did you get to? And yeah, share with us. But I definitely there are exceptions, so it is not a hard and fast rule. Thank you for sharing that for sure. The key though, FOMO, is are you going back at the same size? That's the real commitment, FOMO. If you go yeah. from 65 inch OLED, we had people that have fun with OLED that just simply didn't like them, and which is definitely it's not for everybody. Yeah. And for those who are saying this Dolby Vision issue has been around for months, too slow given the price. Seek, if you were back way back when during Sony's A1 days, right when they first introduced OLED that had Dolby Vision or even the A9G, it took them years to address Dolby Vision, and when they did, it still wasn't a good fix. So. It was years before. I'm not saying it would be years now, but yeah, uh, if history is any indication, it could be months or years. Just got to be patient. But as far as given the price, unfortunately, well, so fortunately, what you are paying for is this effort. Sony's on it. Unfortunately, all TV makers, look at Samsung, right? They, they sell the Q90R, super expensive, and they didn't add eARC until years later. And that was also flagship price, similarly priced to old yeah. TVs. Yeah. All the makers at some point realize, oops, we need to fix something, and it may take a while, yeah. regardless of how much you pay. Well, I mean, and guys, even like with uh, with gaming, I have a 4090, that card was like almost three grand. And when I play an old game, sometimes it doesn't perform well. Mm -hmm. And you do say to yourself, damn, for that much money, it should all be perfect. And I understand that, but nothing is that way. You know, cars are that way. Nothing is that way, unfortunately. I wish everything was perfect. It's just not. And for the money, it doesn't. That's why when you buy something that's very, very affordable, it feels good because you're like, wow, for, it's so amazing for 200 bucks. Yep. It's so incredible. That's why I hate buying speakers because they sound the same sometimes for triple the money. All right. I think we're going to take two more questions and last super chats from everyone oh it's early baby i know I, I gotta go pack man oh, I'm gonna head, up, gonna pack. head up and hang out and now i'm gonna pack right I, I gotta look good okay let's see here here's here's a good question seconds 84 sitting nine feet away mostly uhd dvds and streaming no gaming light controlled room <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to go 8K with those DVDs. 85-inch QN900D or 83-inch G4 coming from a 77-inch A95L. So it's almost as if the 77-inch A95L is last year's news. Literally, it is. <laughs> he's already upgrading. I would suggest you go with the 83-inch G4 because of your UHD DVDs, streaming, and, well, the gaming isn't an issue. I think, personally, the 83-inch G4 is going to give you a better image quality consistently across the board, more often than not. And it'll be similar to the A95L in that you're used to XR clear. Well, you're also going to get something similar on the G4. Samsung, they have their thing, but it's not as, how should I describe it? Not as fine-tuned, as sophisticated as the XR clear, I believe. But the 900D is great for sports. You didn't mention sports. So the strength of the 900D this year is that new sports motion, that's AI sports motion that they brought to the table. Yep. If you're not watching sports, you're not going to appreciate that. So don't pay for the 900D if sports with fast-moving balls, baseball, hockey, right? It's not your thing. 83-inch G4 is my recommendation. Brian, what do you think? He's already upgrading from an A95L77, 900D, which I know you loved, or the 83-inch G4, which sounds like you love even more. It sounds like he doesn't love OLED, though. Ah, maybe. So I would room, say, man. like control room. Um, I like the Q900D a lot, though. Can't lie, I like that TV a lot. Um, I think it's going to be. I think they clearly made that their flagship, and they have a new processor, which is for that TV alone. Um, I love the G4, but it sounds like you're not. You weren't really happy with the A95L. Um, you may, I guess my question to you is, it sounds like you're looking for something different. And the G4, while it might be bigger and larger larger, and maybe a little bit better than the A95L, remember what we're saying. If I think the G4 is better than the A95L, it's still a little bit better. It's not blowing it away. Don't get it twisted. It sounds like you want something new or something different. So if you want something different, then I would go with the 900D at 85 inches. Uh, very bright, um, new processor, 
good at watching everything, and they're going to upscale everything. They're really dedicated to that this year. Um, that's if you want something different. If you love OLED, then a G4 is a can't miss. It's bigger, and it's better because it's bigger, and it's slightly better in my opinion at the moment, but the 900D is a totally different animal, and you might appreciate the, the differences in it. Mm. And he wants to add the, then, he does yeah, watch the football. 900D, you may notice it. Uh, now, just to be fair, the G4 is going to be as bright as the 900D. If it's anything yes. like the G3 last year. So it's not about brightness. The 900D, if you're watching whether it's American soccer, global football, or American football, you're going to see that ball move a little bit clearer. And now that's not to say that LG is bad. So we're going to have to do a side-by-side, -side, Brian, yeah, when I we mean, do that comparison. Yeah, really the pixel know. response of the LG is better, no matter what, because it's an OLED. But the thing that gives me pause, actually, with both of them would be screen uniformity in football. That's where the 900D might struggle. Um, just that panning on the field. Um, but I think 900D is going to be something special this year. If you want to ask you this, measure it. 83 and 85 is a substantial size difference, as I mentioned earlier. If you really want that size and you need that size, that makes the answer for you. Yeah. Let me and I want to answer, I, I need to answer Green Lantern's question. Is 25000 for the LG 97 oh, worth yeah. it? I have 83-inch LG OLED currently, and I agree with Brian. Hell yes, because the fact, that you're, you at, money, the fact that you're asking this question, you have the money, which you means money. You're, looking, you're looking to spend it either on upgrading your Porsche 911 because you want that badass turbo, or you want to trade in you know, this for that, buy some art. Hey, you know what? Enjoy a little bit size immersion. The 97-inch size... You're not going to get it anywhere else. And you'll be the only guy with a 97-inch OLED unless you can't tell the difference between a 97-inch OLED and a 100-inch U8K. In that case, you know, save 20 grand. So I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you, but being an LG, um, I didn't have a chance to see the G4 at 97, but I did see the G2. And I did do a short on it. And I, I filmed that at Robert's store. But um, even surrounded by the G4 and a G4 at 83, you could not stop looking at it. You just could not stop looking at it. It's it, it's unreal, and because and, and also the QMA at one fifteen, and they're so thick. When you look at an LG just kind of hovering there, uh, yeah, you just like it, it's. Yeah. If you got the money, let's do it. Oh, the wait. looks like it's from the eighties. Okay, wait. This is Cos This must be Cosbo's neighbor. So he's actually looking for the micro LED size, but you know what? He's thinking I'm going to save money. Why well, pay that's over hundred? That's hundred and forty grand. The man's saving hundred grand. Oh, the one ten. You about the one in ten inch? Well, the one ten inch. But if it's ninety seven, you know what? Now you're definitely saving money. You, you definitely get the ninety seven inch. Yeah, because you can't. Yeah, I think, I think there's only yeah. a one ten inch. They're not selling any micro LED. Yeah, and you're paying over hundred grand. So, uh oh. Yeah, I would. Uh -oh. I would. I would tell you that that's not worth it. So the Green Lantern and Cosmo is going to stop by and say hello. He looks very ominous in his profile pic. Yeah, he, he looks like a, a, a <laughs> tough, push me. He looks like a, a well-paid bouncer. <laughs> Doing well like, in the hey, bouncing I'm world. the guy with all the money. Yeah. He's a professional wrestler here. Yeah, come in and say hi. We'd love to see it. We have TVs that are large there now. Okay. I, don't hey. I don't think he has any large OLEDs there. And I have to say thank you, everyone, for being here. I mean, we're near the end of our show. We're ending our show. There's over 456 of you. Please click like on your way out. We love you, too. We're going to answer all your questions this year. We're going to have some great head-to-heads. We're going to have some great preliminary shootout. The first flagship face-off coming up in April where we compare the LG G4 versus last year's A95L versus this year's Q. 900D and compared to G3s. So you guys are going to get an idea of how good the G4 and the S95D, of course, by Samsung. How good are these 2024 flagships compared to last year and compared to each other? And we're going to have fun with it, right? We're going to play with it and, you know, calibrate it, not calibrate it, we'll do it all. Because it's not necessarily a shootout per se, but rather just comparing TVs early in the year to see where they are right now to help you make your decision. Brian, any closing thoughts? before we leave? I mean, closing thoughts and the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, just appreciate you guys being here. And um, Fomo, I know you and I talk about this. When we describe what we do to people, not do to them, but what we do. <laughs> do to them. We FOMO <laughs> them to death. People, come on. FOMO them. It almost doesn't make sense. Even 
driving to the airport today explaining to the driver what we do they're like so you review tvs i'm like it's we do more than that and that's what you guys are here for and we do more of that for you and with you and we're actually having an impact on how these things operate now yeah and we have guys like robert zong we have people from sony samsung all these guys are working with us and we're all kind of it's just a different level that we're all going to together and for you guys to jump in with no tv we're not talking but, about it we are talking about tvs but we don't have one in our possession to have 500 people tune in or we had 400 people watch my premiere the other day oh, thank you that's to insane, for watching right? that premiere i mean twenty thousand views in 24 hours for from my channel and we're just starting everyone i mean phone one i've both been on the platform for a long time i've been on here the longest but we're really just starting our energy is off the charts um, him and I are getting together four or five times a year now. That's, you know, we're going to be flying all over the place. We have M-Wave, the electronics shootout. We have all these storylines because this is how the industry really is. They do change. They do change their signature. It's not just OLEDs. It's going to switch back. We're going to have the blue phosphorus OLEDs at some point. I mean, it's it's just, it's awesome. And I really appreciate you guys being with us on Sundays, on Fridays, on Mondays. Yep. I mean, you guys are really amazing. I think we do have the best community on the platform, without a doubt. And the, really the best do. part, Brian, is for the first time, 400 thumbs up, 400 people watching. Thank you, my friends. Wow. Oh, <laughs> respect. Well, and I will tell you this, guys, and this, this is something that is rare. We don't remove comments. So I, I'm, I'm not, you don't see me typing away. There's no comments being removed. I mean, someone's probably going to say something now. <laughs> I think, but, um, and the FOMO and Brian channel, we don't even need to have that. We collaborate so much that we are creators together and we have our great stuff separate and we do things together. But you guys, lack of toxicity. I've had some uh, comments come at me where all it took was for me to just have a conversation and they were totally down about working at out FOMO. There's so many people here that know their stuff. They're excited. And then I want to say this before we go. To have 500 of you in the chat, 400 and not, beat, right and not yell at each other or be and insulting. Not yell at each other. Mm -hmm. But what I really want to encourage, and I do mean this with all my heart, is that we end up with the same 100 people commenting. And we love you guys. But if you're in there and you're shy, don't say hello. Please say hello. Yes. Please. We will get to know you. We know all this crew. Please jump in and say, what's up? If you're going to watch us live like this, please be part of it because we'd love to get to know you guys on a personal level. That's why something like M-Wave will be an opportunity to come meet us. As that guy said before at Value Electronics, if you're in New York, stop in. You know, But we're not – we want to enjoy that. We're really about that kind of engagement. We're not just talking to ourselves here, which is why we do these live. We only do the tech therapy videos off simply because we think that's a topic that him and I want to deep dive in. We don't – address the comments but they feed each other this is where we're with you and mm -hmm. you know i'm just very appreciative and the, literally the tv thing is just starting for us this year see yes fomo was our kickoff all these discussion videos we've had for the last few months both of our outputs are up and now the tvs are coming up and think about what we're doing the commitment he's flying out here even though he's going to have the tvs i'm flying to la you're already We're here. making that commitment. I'm here. <laughs> I'm, yeah, be weird yeah. If I'm, yeah, turn up, turn right. Well, <laughs> my point is, we are we're, we're we're in it, and I really appreciate you guys being with us for the ride, and the ride is just starting. So, it if is. you guys have been with us for the last couple of years, it is the ground floor. Um, we're uh, it's on. I mean, yep. it's on. So and again, SD SD met me at the store. You guys are by the store. You know, I would recommend if you're going to swing by Value Electronics, call them, let them know. That way they're there to hang out with you. Like not, not say make an appointment, just it's a small store. If yeah. you're going to be there, let me know one of our live streams. If I'm there, you're more than more than welcome to come up to me. Um, you know, I'm very, very approachable. I hang out. I'm exactly, I'm just a little smaller than FOMO. If you see me in person, you can tell. Just a little. Hearing. Just a little. A little smaller. But uh, it's on. <laughs> And Yo, just JW, you know, I'm a big mouth. Look at JW's comment right here. I'm a big mouth now. I used to be shy for two years, but you that's what I'm saying, JW. Put JW's comment up for me, phone real quick. Uh what, what was it? Who what? 
Let me see. Uh, JW. It's uh, JW. Right there. there we go. There we go. I, look, I'm a big mouth now, and I used to be shy for two years, but you guys are real. But here's the thing. I do see his profile. We do get to know him. But I've done videos on Valentine's Day film. But we've done Thanksgiving videos. It's some place mm -hmm. where people can actually get together. And that's why, if you guys don't know, um, when we do my premiere videos, there's a five-minute intro. That's not mine. That's YouTube's. That is so everybody can say hello to each other. So when people say to me, damn, your intros are long. Guys, that's really for everybody to find their seats. They're not saying hello to me. They're saying hello to each other, FOMO. Yep. What other channels are doing that? They're saying hello to each other. Hey, what's up? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Then the video we starts. We call it tailgating. You're yeah. tailgating our videos. It's great. Yes. I mean, it's 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 really about hanging out. That's why these streams are so... People say, oh, can you hurry it up? That's not our content. There's plenty of channels that do three-minute videos. This is not... We're about you guys. We'll get the same views talking for three minutes. That's not what it's about. Him and I want to do this. And before I forget, I mean, go ahead. Thanks, Capono. Capono says he's huge. <laughs> Why, have I seen you in person, Capono? I'm actually not that big. So just so you guys know, we'll be in New York for the first flagship face-off on April York, on. 20th. To the 21st so we'll be there doing that first matchup between the s95d and the g4 and the g3 and the a95l and the q900d and you may also see me brian classy might be there a couple other calibrators ask questions have fun with the tvs although this is not going to be a formal shootout and the store is still in operation so we don't want to be too disruptive however if you happen to be in the neighborhood yeah you know we'll be there uh we'll be live streaming so if you can't make it just drop by but you know there's no tickets or anything it's very informal so i hope you know people be... don't show up <laughs> you know you know what's going to be cool though is that whether they're calibrated or they are going to be calibrated um, our hope is also because Valiotronics is very, very sunny and the way the sky lights, we do want to position them at some point where you can see what that matte finish can really bring. Whether you like it or not, or you appreciate it or not, that technology is pretty freaking amazing. It's not exactly like, yeah. it's not really matte. It's this extra, but if you can see how that, we'll see how it performs. If, if, you're, if you're watching us do a comparison FOMO, and you can actually see the S95D, and you can see you and I picking our nose, and you have your answer. <laughs> You're sitting and, there like, ah! <laughs> oh, and before I shut down the stream, <laughs> I have to make this comment. So we found out who has the pink curtains here. That's how much we know you guys. Scott, I'm not talking about you, oh, but Scott, what's up, baby? We, we remember everything your comments. We have good times, great memories. Watch our old shows if you can. Everything is funny. But before I go, I'd like to say thank you for being here. Thank you, Brian, for making time. I know you need to run off to dinner what? and uh, enjoy what? your new Hollywood lifestyle. Uh, until I next will. time, my friends, <laughs> stop the FOMO. Love you guys. See ya. Take care.